and please remain standing as Billy Malden, MRO Chaplain, offers today's invocation. Let's pray. A gracious God and Heavenly Father, as we rise up in recognition of your presence in our lives, we do so grateful for the opportunity that we have today, the freedom that we enjoy. So as always, we continue to offer our prayers and our hearts of thanksgiving for the men and women of our armed forces, both here at home and abroad, that are watching over and protecting us. Be with them. Be with their families. Watch over these drivers, teams, officials today. We just pray for a safe day of racing, a great day for everybody. And especially on this day, we remember the families and friends and all the wonderful people of the Carolinas. We ask you to be with them and comfort them as they deal with Hurricane Florence. Father, may your peace be with us all. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. And here today to honor America with the singing of our national anthem, please welcome Sierra Black. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so Driver strapping in. This is it. The first race of the playoffs from Las Vegas Motor Speedway.
beautiful day The sun beat down I had the radio on I was driving Trees flew by Me and Del were singing Little runaway I was flying Yeah, you're running down a dream That never would come to me Working on a mystery It's Monster Energy Cup Series Racing from Las Vegas, the South Point 400. So many different storylines that we'll be following on this first race of the playoffs. For a few of those, let's go down to Pit Road and Dave Burns. Rick, when I talked to Kevin Harvey's crew chief, Rodney Childers, this morning, he said, we're going to be good. I said, what are you basing that on? He said, everything. That should be of concern to the rest of the crowd because earlier this year, he won this race, leading 214 of 267 laps, Parker. Well, Dave, the other favorite entering these playoffs is this 18 car of Kyle Busch. He finished second here in the spring. But, and this is a key but, this is probably not, it was probably one of his worst racetracks for this race team. They say it's one of the toughest places they go to to get the balance right on this race car. This will be an incredibly tough test for them to start off these playoffs, Kelly. Chase Elliott enters the playoffs the number eight seed, and while Crew Chief Alan Gustafson told me there used to be a massive void between them in the top three, he says that gap has closed significantly. They're one lingering unloan, unknown. What kind of speed will they have on these mile and a half tracks? We're about to find out, Marty. Kelly, to me, you can sense the playoff pressure here on pit road. I saw it in Martin Truex Jr.'s face. I asked him, you seem determined today. He said, it's game time. And for us, we have one of the cars to beat today. We don't want to waste it. Time to get the playoff started and crank the engines here in Vegas. And now, race fans, it is time for those most famous words in motorsports. And here to give the command, please welcome today's Grand Marshal, Brendan Gaughan. On behalf of my family, and more importantly, Las Vegas, Nevada, it's my honor to tell my friends, drivers, start your engines! Brendan gone with an amazing command. Back in 2003, he won in the truck series right here at Las Vegas. Who gets the first win in the playoffs? Green flags next.
NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa, where the racers stay in Vegas. Monster Energy, unleash the beast. Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. And by Toyota, let's go places. Here in Sin City, let's hear what this town is all about from Mr. Las Vegas, Wayne Newton. Mr. Newton, would you like to hit or stand? Would you say that one more time? Would you like to hit or would you like to stand? Did you hear that? The gentleman wants to know if I'm going to take a chance. I'm here in Las Vegas, the greatest city in the world. That was born out of the idea of taking chances, right, right? And he wants to know if I'm going to go for it here. Ladies and gentlemen, he did not need to ask. Whoever you are, no matter what brings you to my town, you don't come here to play it safe. You don't come here to go halfway. No, no, no. You come to Las Vegas to push the limits, to take the risk, to put everything on the line and leave on top of the world. Now, if you're a performer, someone who feeds off the rush of high stakes, the adrenaline of everybody watching, the energy of competing to be the best. This is the perfect place for you. You can't come here and play scared to play not to lose. You have to push aside your fears, your hesitations, and just let it ride. Because folks, that's how you win. You know what I'm going to say, right? Ryan, hit me. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Las Vegas. Man, I love this town. And who will let it ride today? How about that? Wayne Newton getting us ready. Now, that's an inspirational speech before the start of the playoffs. Let's take a look at the starting grid brought to you by South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa. That will roll across the top of the screen. We're going to have the opportunity to talk with Austin Dillon. He was supposed to start 18th, but because of a problem with uh, technical inspection, he will have to go to the back. So a difficult starting position for Austin Dillon, but let's dial him up on the radio. Hey, Austin, it's Burton up in the booth. You with us? Yeah, man, I got you guys out clear. Well, bud, you got a tough start to the day, uh, having to start in the back. Your crew chiefs have to be at home today. And I just want to know, man, how are you going to overcome this? Hard work, determination, man. That's what it's all about, trying not to make any mistakes overcome what we got to start with but uh that's what we do at rcr we'll, we'll work hard and put ourselves in the right position at the end well it looks like to me with this track as slick as it's going to be today it's going to be a lot of hard work how are you going to attack this racetrack just trying to do my best to uh change lines when necessary when the rubber gets built up you got to be able to be maneuverable and not get set to what my way as far as one line be able to move around and uh, find speed on with grip on the track all right, bud, it's going to be fun to watch. Good luck. Thanks, Jeff. And as you mentioned, Jeff, Justin Alexander, normal crew chief for Austin Dillon, not here. Danny Stockman, who has been a part of a championship with Austin Dillon, uh, will be calling the shots from atop the pit box. And let's check in with Rutledge Wood. Rick, heat is definitely going to be a factor today for all of the teams right now down here on pit road. Of course, this pit road is concrete and then it meets the asphalt. Well, right now, the concrete is climbing just north of 115 degrees, about 116, 117. The asphalt is another 15 degrees higher. Some of the temperatures on the car were as high as 165. 
on some of the cars where they featured the black around the grill. Now, the crazy thing you can see is Jimmy Johnson was really hot earlier, right after the driver intros. My man starts grabbing bottles of water and take a look. He just started dousing himself, trying to get cooled down. But guys, you got to wonder, how does that work once you get a suit wet like that? You hope you stay cool all day. But also, when you're driving one of these miniature ovens like this, that water is going to evaporate a lot quicker than people think. Yeah, that miniature oven traveling at over 200 miles an hour entering the turns. A lot of heat inside the cockpit, guys. We'll ride along and inside these cars uh, with a few different drivers, one of those being A.J. Allmendinger in the 47. He has the Kroger click list onboard camera. It will go 360 degrees, giving us a vantage point all the way around that car. Yeah, Kevin Harvick has a Ford camera. He also has 360 degree camera. We'll spin it around, see Ryan Blaney next door. Another driver carrying one of the cameras will be Kyle Busch has the Sunoco onboard camera in that 18 car. He is a side panner. That means that the right side of the car, the camera right up against that window and we'll see them get right up next to the wall entering and exiting these turns. And this racetrack is one of the more rough tracks we go to and riding along with his Toyota cam on Denny Hamlin on the helmet cam. We're going to see how rough it is and we'll see how much his head moves around and we're going to get to see exactly what he looks at all day long. All right, Steve Letard as a crew chief. How do you break this race down? Well, it's going to be a difficult race, a long race, but it has to get breaking down. Remember, we race in stages, points awarded at the end of those stages, points again at the end. So 267 laps, just over 400 miles. That's broken down into stage one and stage two, both 80 laps in length. That final stage, 107 laps and the fuel window at 56 to 58 laps. That means pit stops will be required in every stage. We'll see if they're fortunate enough to come under yellow or if they'll do it under green flag conditions, right? Again, we mentioned the heat. It is going to be hot both in the car and on pit road. Let's go back to pit road and Dave Burns. Rick, one of the things that Las Vegas is known for is its shows, including comedy acts. But when the 11 car checked, 11 car team checked underneath their car this morning, they saw something funny and weren't laughing. It was a suspension part on the left rear of the race car that crew chief Mike Wheeler told me looked tweaked. They changed that before inspection, but they're glad they caught it before the race, Parker. And guys, you mentioned how Danny Stockman is filling in for Justin Alexander. I got to talk to him this morning about being in the playoffs, about filling in. I said, you know, one thing about Austin Dillon is it seems like he loves the pressure of the playoffs. He said, you know what's great about him? He's in kill mode right now. This guy enters with incredible intensity, and I've seen it before when we fought for a championship in the XFINITY Series. He's as cool as a cucumber, even under all this pressure, Kelly. So Joey Logano enters the playoffs as a sixth seed, but also coming off a race at Indianapolis where they, quote, struggled. But still, crew chief Todd Gordon told me he is encouraged by the speed they have shown late in the regular season and encouraged by the fact that Las Vegas is one of Joey Logano's best tracks. Statistically speaking, if he can get this win, he's not just through to the round of 12. It'll also be win number 500 for Team Penske, Marty. Kelly Kyle Larson loves multi-groove racetracks. And guess what? Vegas is certainly that. You can run the high line. You can run the bottom line. And Kyle told me round one of the playoffs this year kind of freaked me out. He said Vegas is a race where I know we can win. Richmond, not one of my best racetracks. And the road course at Charlotte, I think everybody's worried about that race. So today is the time we have to take advantage. I expect Kyle Larson, Rick, to go to the top of the racetrack almost immediately and try and create some speed up there. A lot have taken that 42 and called him the favorite because of the opportunity to run up high. It's time now for today's fresh take brought to you by Subway. We look back on the March race and the temperature during that race. High temperature 58 degrees. Now today's temperature as we're running is 99 degrees. So 40 degrees warmer today and Jeff Burton how difficult is that for a driver. Well, it makes driving the racetrack very difficult because we talked about how slick it's going to be, but inside the car, it's just hot, Rick. There's no other way to say it. Already 124 degrees, having dropped the green flag yet. So, Junior, you're going to have to stay hydrated all day long. Take care of yourself. Yeah, well, this temperature that's going to really take some grip out of the racetrack is going to be slicker. Uh, cooler temperatures, you have more grip in the track, and that brings the groove lower down on the bottom of the racetrack. So today with the high temps, we're going to see guys using that top groove. We saw it in the first practice on Saturday early in the morning, guys running the top, guys practicing it all day long Saturday at the top groove. So seeing a lot of guys use that groove, 
Larson will be up there. We know that. A lot of other guys will be up there with him. Listen in to Clint Boyer's radio. Got to work hard today, Brett. Be at the right place, right time. Line's going to move all over the place, just like it did for you yesterday. That full man. Calm and composed in there. Let's go win this thing. He mentioned Brett. That's Brett Griffin, his spotter. Also spots for Elliot Sadler, who was in the Xfinity Series race yesterday. Pace car has pulled off the track. The field now in the hands of Eric Jones. Second career pull, one on Friday. He and Joey Logano coming in front of the grandstands. We're underway in Vegas. Already a fight for the lead. Logano diving to the bottom of the track in three. He'll take the spot away from Jones on lap one. Slid way up the racetrack, drove into turn three, kind of overdrove drove the corner a little bit, but really didn't lose any speed doing it. And here comes 18 of Kyle Busch on the bottom of the racetrack. The bottom of the racetrack, very, very rough. We'll see this line move up the track to avoid those bumps. But right now, everyone with the fresh Goodyear tires hugging that bottom white line, the shortest distance around this racetrack. Now you see Kevin Harvick looking to the inside of Kurt Busch. Already, Chase Elliott has decided the apron will work when he went through the front stretch. See Kurt there making the middle of the racetrack work. Certainly Harvick looks a little bit faster, but Really, Bush was able to stay with him on corner entry at that top lane. And Junior, I think that's what you're expecting. You you keep saying this top lane is going to come in. Well, early in the run, maybe the bottom. But as this track gets hotter and slicker and the tires get older, you're going to move up the racetrack. Yeah, new tires with the grip. The guys are going to be chasing around the bottom. That top's going to come in as we get around lap 20. And the spotters and the drivers will communicate. They're good. Somebody's going to jump up there. Somebody's going to start going fast. Other teams will communicate that to their driver. Hey, someone's making time up on the high side. And they'll start to know by about halfway through the race, right around what lap to move up. They say, all right, man, maybe go up and try that high side here around lap 15 or so. Well, you guys have been talking bottom versus top. One thing about the bottom of the racetrack, it's very rough. The best way to show it, ride on this helmet of Denny Hamlin. Junior, take us for a lap. It's a really buffy, bumpy racetrack down into turn one of the worst bumps. We're going down into one. It's actually going to go around the bumps. Still rough up here, but the bottom is even worse and he's already decided to sort of go around those bumps and and that's another reason why those guys will run that high line just because it's smoother it's easier some bumps down here in three and four the worst bumps in this end of the racetrack are on corner exit right out here against the fence right there wham 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 there's some bumps right against the fence car bounces on the right front stop real hard shakes the driver deal with that all day long now he's down to the bottom. Look at that. That's how that's how rough it is down there. All the way off the wall down into the center of the corner. There's a tunnel on that end of the racetrack. Bumps all the way off the wall down into that tunnel. I'd have to take some Dramamine. That'd make me motion sickness. It's so rough. Yeah, it's, you can deal with it all day long. Doesn't go away. Even as the tire pressures come up and so forth. The bumps off turn four are just as annoying as the bumps into turn one. We don't talk about them as much, but... So Logano has separated himself from Kyle Busch by about nine tenths of a second. Then Eric Jones has fallen back to third. Blaney running fourth. Kevin Harvick is fifth. Kurt Busch sixth. Denny Hamlin, as we were just riding along with him, in seventh. Martin Shrex Jr. eighth. Chase Elliott ninth. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr. tenth. Marty. Rick, you saw how bumpy it was for Denny Hamlin. Right behind him is Martin Truex Jr. And they intentionally run through the bumps. They're just so much better on the bottom of the racetrack. And it takes a while for that car to come in. Jr., that's kind of counterintuitive. You would think, hey, you would run one high, even though he's going right high right now to get around Denny Hamlin. You would think you would run one high, avoid those bumps. But Truex and those guys like the bottom so much, they're willing to go through those bumps all day long because they think that's where the speed is. Yeah, he ran the bottom in practice. I texted him this morning. I said, you going to get on the fence at all this weekend? See what that car can really do? But he's been running the bottom, and he's been having great times and great speed doing that. You, know, you don't got to go up to find speed. Don't go up there. His car obviously has a great front end to get through the front, to get through the bumps, the stops, the, the springs. Everything's timed perfectly that he doesn't 
have issues like most of the guys do getting through there. Let's go all the way back to the front. Joey Logano, he's out over a second on Kyle Busch. And I think this race is huge for Joey Logano and his team. You know, Joey, they really haven't shown a lot of speed in the regular season. And they unloaded fast here in practice. Had They qualified well. They were, they were good all the way through practice. And I think that's important to now take off here early in the race and drive away from from Kyle Busch, who many people believe is a contender to win this championship, or maybe the favorite. But this has been a good racetrack for Joey Logano, and I think that when you go to somewhere that you've been good, he's led laps in five straight races here. When you go somewhere that you've been good, you need to be good right now at the start of the playoffs. You've got to build some positive momentum, and right now it's going that way for Joey Logano. And this team very hungry. They did not make the playoffs last year. They want to show everyone they are championship contenders. NASCAR Heat 3 is available now on the Xbox One. It's Monster Energy Cup Series Racing from Las Vegas, the South Point 400. Well, this past Thursday, South Point hosted all 16 playoff drivers inside their showroom for media day. That was just part of the playoff buzz around South Point as the casino floor itself underwent a full NASCAR transformation, further adding to the spectacle a photo op featuring a world-famous Budweiser Clydesdale actually ordering a drink from the bar. Joe Logano out front has an eight-tenth of a second lead over Kyle Busch. Well, we're only on lap 16 of this race, and it's a long race. Check this out right here, 144 degrees. Just remember, when we showed that when this race started on the pace laps, it was 124 degrees, so already it's climbed 20 degrees, and it's not going to get cooler, Rick. Long day for these drivers. Parker. 
Well, Rick, as we approach lap 20 here, and we see a lot of these cars running the bottom, I have to wonder if a lot of that is by design, because talking to a lot of these crew chiefs into this as they came out of practice, many of them had suffered right front blistering issues and tire issues in practice around the lap 20 mark in a run. So therefore, I have to wonder if some of these crew chiefs have told those drivers to stay on the bottom, to avoid going up top, to try and take care of those tires, Marty. And Parker, it seems to be very team situational as to who has tire issues. But from what I'm hearing from a lot of teams, they are tight in the center, chattering the, the tires off of the corner. And I'm wondering from you, Jeff Burton, would that make you a little more worried about those right fronts? You're chattering going through center off on these corners. If I'm chattering a tire, meaning the, the tire is actually bouncing up and down on the racetrack as I turn the wheel, yes, that scares me to death if I'm worried about right fronts. And Steve, right front problems on a day like this where it's so hot, that's not unusual. No, not unusual. And, and the concern is I'm not sure there's anything you could do that you could fix it. You know, it is just the conditions. Over 100 degrees ambient, that right front tire is well north of probably 280 or 300 degrees. So, Kelly, you know, you could try to coach your driver. You could tweak the setup. But in the end, I, my, it just may be race management. Understand when to push the car and when to be very patient. Well, it sounds like something else that could be getting hot today are the brakes. Chase Elliott in the nine car came across the radio to tell his team that he had a vibration. They did not spring into action. In fact, uh, instead, I should say, Alan Gustus and the crew chief told him to turn on his brake fans to help cool the brakes, see if that would help solve the problem. Again, the crew has not reacted, so they're not calling the pit road. That might have been the solution. These temperatures, it's going to be tough on the cars, tough on the drivers, tough on the pit crews. They're sitting down there in this heat. They're like special teams, right? They sit on the sidelines. They'll get five, six, seven chances to react and do their thing today. Hard to stay focused in these conditions. How about this battle between the 41 of Kurt Busch, that blue car, that's Ryan Blaney in the 12, and the 78 of Martin Trex Jr. on the bottom of the racetrack. Parker. Well, guys, Danny Stockman, who is on, filling in for Justin Alexander on the three car, told me that Austin Dillon is on kill this morning as he enters the playoffs. Well, guess what? He started this race 38th, and he just passed seven-time champion Jimmy Johnson to get in the 20th position. 18 cars. What an incredible run by this three car early in the race. And we do want to congratulate Justin Alexander because they had a baby. And so that is why the crew chief for the three team is not here. And... Up front, Logano, that gap that was eight tenths of a second has now closed to about a half a second, even under a half a second. So Kyle Busch, Las Vegas native, is closing in on Joey Logano. Yeah, Kyle's just been kind of clipping away a little bit at the time, and you can see they're both running in that bottom lane. We've heard from the pit road reporters how some teams want to run the bottom right now, but as, Kurt, as Kyle gets closer to Joey Logano, it's going to be tempted. There he goes to the top. It's very tempting to go because it's so much cleaner air there. So he can make more time perhaps by jumping up on the outside. It didn't surprise me to see him try something different once he got about five or six car lengths behind him. And Jeff, that's a fun battle for the lead on the left. On the right-hand side, Ryan Blaney struggling, falling back another position. He, too, saying he's tight, chattering the tires through the corner, really struggling. And his quote was, I'm a roadblock out here. Steve, I don't know if Junior ever told you he was a roadblock, but that's not a good thing, is it? Uh, no, he's had a bunch of colorful terms. I'm not <laughs> sure if roadblock ever made the list, but uh, that happens. But he has to do this, right, Dale? Don't worry about the 42. I know it's frustrating, but only 25 laps, and you got to manage your equipment. Well, he sees Kyle Larson running at high side going around him. He can just, you know, move, move around and see if that helps his car. Maybe try that high side and see what kind of speed he can find there. Larson's been driving through the field, moving up, and he's on the top of both ends of the racetrack. And so as a, I haven't seen the 12 car move around much or move up the racetrack to see where the speed is in his car. See so a battle for the lead up front. Looking pretty good. There's a battle for third. Kevin Harvick takes that from Eric Jones. Kyle Busch was looking at the inside of Joey Logano for the lead. And the gap had closed. There we are. You see it back up on the high side. So Kyle now is doing everything that Joey isn't. So Joey drove to the bottom in three and four. Kyle went to the top. The last time in there, in one and two, Kyle did the exact opposite of Joey. So now it's just a game of cat and mouse, Rick, is Joey's trying to not let Kyle know where he's going to go, and Kyle's just reacting to it. See right there, Joey went to the bottom, so Kyle, to the middle rather, so Kyle just went straight to the bottom. And Jeff, just before that gap started closing, Adam Stevens came on the radio and told Kyle Busch, Joey Gano looks like he's starting to get loose, just keep clicking off those consistent lap times. And right at that point, he started gaining right to him. 
He was within a car length there for a moment, exiting turn two. A little bit of gap between the two of them as they go through three and four and back across the grandstands. Kelly. And Joey Logano spotter TJ Majors trying to tell Joey every move that the 18 car is making. Meanwhile, as the 18 car observed, he is getting a little loose in one end. Joey Logano has been working the track bar, but it's not helping. In fact, it's kind of hurting on one end of this racetrack. They're going to have to get the balance sorted down on pit road. We talk about how you battle, how you race, how you complete a pass or try to make a pass. I think this is the best way to watch. We're on the roof of Kyle Busch's second place car, the yellow car in front of him, Joey Logano, as they head down to turn one. It's going to be lane selection. Joey Logano, where are you going to go? Kyle Busch doesn't want to follow. He's going to pick a different lane. Yeah, he's been running at high side and gaining on Joey, and I think that he wants to continue that trend, continue running high. But as he gets closer to Joey, Joey's getting that information about where he's at, where he's running, what line he's running to close in on him. Joey's, and I say this in a nice way, he's one of those guys that really does a lot of blocking. Even on tracks like this, Joey will drive wherever he needs to to make it tough on your car aerodynamically. So he moves around uh, with that information he's getting or just what he sees uh, from Kyle Busch in the mirror. Well, as these two battle, don't look now. This is out the front of the 18, but on corner exit, you're going to see that white number for that mobile one machine of Kevin Harvick. Dave, he has entered the picture. And as you guys talk about how different drivers do things, how they search that line and get that information is different from driver to driver. Kevin Harvick will do the searching and then be told whether or not that was a better lap. He'll hear, that was really good, or that wasn't as fast. Dale Earnhardt Jr., what did you like to do? Did you like to be told where to go? Or at least hear the times and know what worked? Yeah, I, w I wasn't a guy that liked to hear lap times. Uh, but TJ was always giving me information about where guys were running on the racetrack. The thing about it is, if you're going to, you know, if you run the high side, it's when to go up there. You can go up there too soon, and and not make enough time, or actually lose time to guys running the bottom. So, just finding out who's making time up there. The first guy that goes up there and he runs fast, I want to know that right away. Give me that information. Somebody's at the top, and somebody's making it work. Joe Logano stays up front, but. Closing in, Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick.
NASCAR Drive is your live race day companion. Watch throughout the broadcast, select alternate camera angles, or you can even ride along with in-car video of your favorite drivers. Visit NASCAR.com slash drive or download the NASCAR mobile app today. Somebody on a not a normal Sunday drive driving to the front is Kevin Harvick. Harvick has taken over the top spot and now pulling away. And pit stops have started, Dave. 15th place car, Brad Keselowski comes to pit road. His car was a bit free, but not too bad. He's been really trying to take care of that right front tire. They'll get a look at it when it comes off, Marty. We told you about Ryan Blaney saying he was, quote, a roadblock. He said after that, the car is absolutely terrible. I need front turn, and I can't stand you to loosen up the back anymore. A lot of changes here for that 12 car, Dave. 41 car's been a little bit tight. Actually, it went loose everywhere near the end of that run for Kurt Busch, so he'll get four Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel on the 41. Marty? Took a little bit longer for the 78 car to come in than I think Martin Truex Jr. expected. About lap 10, it started getting much better. They stayed committed to the bottom the entire time. A little bit too tight early in the run, Parker, but it freed up the longer they went. And Austin Dillon started this race 38th, got inside the top 20, but fell back a little bit. Just got too tight there at the end of the run. Four Goodyear tires, Snoko Fuel for the three, Dave. Kevin Harvick, obviously very, very good, has found his way to the front, searching the fastest line on the racetrack. He'll get four fresh tires and fuel. You don't want to make a mistake when you come to pit road, and that's exactly what happened with Trevor Bain and the six. Marty. Kyle Larson on pit road. He said, when I get to the wall, the car cuts good. Otherwise, we struggle a little bit on the bottom. A little bit of an air pressure change. Not a big change here for the 42 of Kyle Larson. Green flag stops continuing here at Vegas. You see at the front of pit road there, Eric Jones on pit road as well, Parker. Kyle Busch pits out of the lead. He just needs to be freer in the center right now if he's to beat that 22 car. It's four Goodyear tires and air pressure adjustment on the 18, Kelly. Chase Elliott came to pit road. He had been running in the eighth position for most of this race. He said by the end that his nine car was just turning a little bit free. You see they've got the wrench in to make a chassis adjustment. There'll be an air pressure adjustment for Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel. Denny Hamlin is coming down pit road now in the 11. You'll see on the helmet cam right there. He'll look, make sure in the mirror that there are no cars coming in. Take a look to the right, sees his pit sign, and he'll pull in. Hits his marks perfectly. They pull the sign away. They'll go to work. Chassis adjustment for him. Wasn't happy with the handling of his race car. He'll get four fresh Goodyear tires and a full load of Sunoco fuel. I mentioned Trevor Bain as they continue to work a little bit slower stop there for Denny Hamlin but uh, mentioned Trevor Bain and speeding on pit road he hadn't come to pit road yet and so they just showed him the black flag with the white cross on it which means they're no longer going to score the six until they come and serve their penalty. Denny Hamlin coming off of pit road again cycling through all of these green flag pit stops. Regan Smith in the 95 has decided to stay out, so right now he is being shown as the leader. Kevin Harvick had a 1.2 second lead on Joey Logano when pit stop started. Right now, Harvick and Logano are running fourth and fifth. The three cars in front of them have not come to pit road yet. Right off to pit road after this cycle, 22 cars got some decent front end speed, but I don't know whether uh, he has a long run speed to run with that four car, Jeff. Yeah, that's what we saw earlier is that, you know, Joey Logano took off, he dropped the green flag, he drove away from everybody, but Kevin Harvick wasn't in front of the field. So we really don't know what kind of takeoff speed he has because he didn't have the clean air that Joey Logano has. And we saw here in the spring, Harvick just dominated this race. And I don't think they want to get Kevin Harvick out in front of this pack. You're going to have to fight him all day. Uh, he had great, great speed in practice and was so good here in the spring. Yeah. I don't think you want to give him. I like what I'm seeing out of this 22 car right here after all these newer tires, and he's able to keep pace with the four. What has he made as far as adjustments to be able to have that speed at the end of the run? That's well, the question. The other thing is Kevin Harvick, he's done this a long time, and when you talk about potential tire troubles, the damage can happen the first lap after a green flag pit stop. So a veteran driver, Kelly, will go out there, run 80% just for one lap, give that tire a little bit of relief, and then hammer down. I can tell you that they made an air pressure adjustment on that 22 car to try to help Joey Logano out. By the end of that first stint, he was loose on one end of the racetrack, tight on the other end, and he said he was just having too much trouble holding down the bottom of the racetrack. We'll see how this adjustment helps him out, Dave. 
Kelly, just a little bit of trouble on the right front tire of playoff contender Alex Bowman. You see it on the inside of the right front there. Guess what, guys? You wouldn't be surprised to hear this. He said, took off real tight. Steve, can you explain why a tight race car damages a tire worse? Well, it's simple. A tight race car means the front tires are sliding. It's like going in on a patch of ice, turning the wheel, but going straight. That's what Alex Bowman is feeling. He goes in the racetrack. When the car goes straight, it's sliding that right front tire. A sliding tire creates more heat, damages the tire. And Martin Truex Jr. on the bottom of the racetrack trying to stay in front of the 18 of Kyle Busch. Truex had great speed on the bottom, staying on the bottom the whole first run. He's moving into the top five here. Kyle Busch running that high side pretty early in this run. I think he was on, he wants to probably work on the balance of that car so that he, has, he doesn't have to run there so early because you see it's not, it's not moving him forward. He's not making speed there. He just lost the position to Martin Trix Jr. About to lose maybe another spot here to Kyle Larson. There's something else you need to think about is Kyle pit, pitted after everybody else. He has two laps newer tires than the people he's racing around. Under two laps doesn't sound like much, but at this racetrack, that is something, and they are still not able, he's still not able to keep up, even though he has a little bit fresher tire. I know, I'm, I'm surprised he's up high this early in this in this particular run, and I'm sure he doesn't want to be there. He wants to run out of here, and he goes to the bottom. So when we went away to commercial a little while ago, Kevin Harvick took the lead, and you see how easy it was. He just turned left and drove underneath the bush and just drove off. And then in the next lap, he ran down Joey Logano and just put his left sides on the white line. And this is Kevin Harvick. That's, that's what we see on these hot, slick racetracks. Kevin Harvick does such a good job of just wrapping the line, putting his left sides on that white line and just rolling all the way around the racetrack. And that's how he took the lead here. And that's what we saw here in the spring. Good battle for second here. Kurt Busch, man, he's been fast all weekend, too. He, just, he says this ain't a great track for him, but he's got a real opportunity to have an awesome day today. Mark Trix Jr. joins this battle for second place. Once these guys cycle, this will be the battle for second, and there it is. And this is what I'm waiting for. Who's going to emerge from the middle of this playoff pack? We talk about the big three. Kurt Busch of the 41, he raises his hand early and says, I want to be a contender. Cup Series Racing from Las Vegas Motor Speedway. 
Make sure to tune in on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern as the NBC Sports will be on Sirius XM joining the morning drive. That's NASCAR Radio Channel 90. This week, Dale Jarrett, Hall of Famer, is going to join the guys again on NASCAR Radio Channel 90. And a great battle for the lead starting to build as Harvick and Truex now have closed the gap and gotten by uh, Regan Smith, who was staying out. He will now come to pit road, but Regan Smith falling all the way down to 10th position. Now the fight for the lead is between Kevin Harvick and Martin Truex Jr. Dave. Harvick's crew chief, Rodney Childers, told me this morning he was very confident they'd be good. I said, what are you basing that on? He said, everything. Then he gave me a little more detail. He said, we made sure the car was comfortable and that it would race groove-wise from the top to the bottom. He felt like they were the best car on the bottom, but they could still make some time on the top. And that bottom group, by the way, he felt they improved over the March race, which they dominated. They drove away from Kurt Busch. And, uh, well, the four car has, and Martin has kept pace. That's that's one thing I'm watching here. I thought Trix was great in practice. He's been running this four car down a little bit at a time. A tenth here, a tenth there. And they have run away from the rest of the field. Big bobble there for Martin Trix Jr. as he exited turn four, probably around those bumps that you've talked about, Jr. 42 of Kyle Larson able to get by the 18. Right around the part of the run where the top is Going to come in for Larson. He's moved up there. He's making time. I don't think it'll take him long to get by Logano for fourth. You see the value of the top of the racetrack. It's down the straightaway. I mean, look how much more speed the 42 carries down the straightaway. That doesn't mean he has more horsepower. It just means he's able to get into the throttle earlier when he runs the top. This right here, the 22 is going to have to leave him a lane, and he's easily going to go to the outside, Marty. And Steve, it's funny. I've heard a couple of spotters say, hey, anyone going up top, they're losing time. Well, not Kyle Larson. Maybe they should tell him that. He's gaining a ton of time on the top of the racetrack where he likes, but it's gonna. It's because the race pace is slowing down so much. That's what's working so well for Kyle Larson and his race team right now. Also on the last stop for Eric Jones, they came down pit road in the top 10, fell out of the top 10. Jeff, what happened on pit road is that left front wouldn't come down. And you guys know sometimes that's a sway bar issue. It could be an issue later for Eric Jones as well. They lost a ton of spots here on pit road. Yeah, Marty, what concerns me about that is if the left front wouldn't come out of the wheel well when the left side was jacked up, I don't know that that problem will go away, Steve. That's a problem that may open itself back up as this race goes on. And he can run great, but if you come down pit road and lose spots every time, it doesn't matter how good you run. Yeah, you might be able to get a little bit better if the tire changer can anticipate this. But, I mean, the tire has to be able to come off the car. He can't take it off until it falls out of the fender. Left side of your screen, you see the rundown order and the 16, the green 16 chip next to the driver's names. Those are all the drivers that are involved in the playoffs, the 16 drivers fighting for a championship. And here comes a big fight. Martin Truex Jr. again got loose, exiting the turn, but had closed the gap on Kevin Harvick as they go around lap traffic. Yeah, Kevin got to Ross Chastain. Oh, Kevin's having some ah. trouble here. Big run for Martin Truex Jr. And he'll take the lead away as they go down across the start finish line and into turn one. Kevin had a hard time getting through three and four there. We talked at the top of the show that, you know, the big three, that was the storyline for the first two thirds of this regular season. They had fallen off. Well, here we are in the playoffs. Kevin Harvick dries up and take the lead. But how good does this feel for Martin Trex Jr.? And the announcement comes at 78. The team's shutting down. Now he has run the leader down and passed him under green in the first stage of the first race of the playoffs. Martin Truex Jr. came into this race with 35 playoff points. Again, you get one point to win a stage. You get five points to win the race. So Martin Truex Jr. looking for one of those playoff points here with just 19 laps to go in stage one. How about Alex Bowman? He has driven up to seventh place, and he's using that outside, going to jump on the outside of Joey Logano right here. This is Alex's first playoff appearance, but in round one right here, the moment doesn't look too big for him. And we've continued to see the 18 of Kyle Busch drop back. Let's listen into his radio. Anywhere else around the racetrack, I got no right front grip. Just slide the nose. Just get in a corner, loose, land, slide the nose. Every freaking lap. And now Bowman 
trying to go by right up against the fence and he will try to make the pass on Kyle Busch and he completes it. I look to my right make sure you're sitting up here it looks like you're driving this 88. I've seen that car run that lane before. Listening to Kyle Busch's comments about his car being tight. That's why we saw him at the top groove so early in this run. They're going to have to work on getting that car to turn so he doesn't have to move up there so quickly while the rest of the field's making so much time on the bottom. Kyle Larson trying to take the third spot away from Kurt Busch. We're going to see this all day long from Kyle Larson. He he doesn't have that takeoff speed. The first 10 laps, he's not going to, he, you know, he wasn't very good on this run, but he is going to fly at the end of these runs. He's wanting long green flag runs all day long. It's you mentioned like he's going to fly. He has already gained 1.5 seconds on Martin Shrex Jr. He was four seconds behind the leader about three laps ago. He is clicking off great laps. Yeah, with 16 to go, that's really the question, right? Will he run the leader down? before he runs out of laps. And Dale, I was going to say, it seems like the top is the place to be if you have a car that can handle that position on the racetrack. Seems like the 18 of Kyle Busch is so tight, he has to almost be down a little bit, leave himself some room. You know, riding, looking right now at Blaney, that 12 car, a few laps ago, he was trying to run the outside, and we keep talking about how slick and rough this racetrack is. When you lose just a little bit of grip, there you go, contact. Obviously, Amarola, took the air off of him and kind of squeezed him up there. You see right here, Eric, Eric Amarillo sliding up the racetrack and, ooh, that stuff makes you mad. You'd run to the wall like that. Marty. Yeah, I'll say it makes you mad. Ryan Blaney not happy at all, and they said that's the second time today the 10 has done that to them. Blaney said the car is, quote, killed. It looks pretty good from here, no smoke, and that's what Jeremy Bullen saw as well. No smoke, keep it out there. So Ryan Blaney, a playoff contender, in trouble early. He's lost a lot of spots in 18th now. Vegas 10 laps to go in stage one Kyle Larson with an unscheduled stop you can see that right front tire is flat he said one lap ago I think I might have something wrong with the right front we talked about potential tire issues today and Parker mentioned teams running in the low line to save that right front where's Kyle Larson been all day long 
that high line, that right front gone for that 42 car, pitting when they don't want to pit here with now nine laps to go in stage one. It's a double whammy. Not only is he going to lose a lap, but as you mentioned, Marty, the most inopportune time because in eight more laps, points are going to be given out to that top ten. And when we talk playoffs, it's about points. It's about advancing, and he's going to miss out. That's the only thing about running that high side is it feels so good, man. You'll drive the right front right off the car. We've done it before, Steve. I've been up there and running and had three, four tenths on the field, and you would tell me, hey, man, you need to back it down a little bit. You don't have to run that hard and beat that right front tire up. Yeah, we've had that conversation. Because you said, well, I don't know. I just know it feels good. And, and it was my job to manage it. You go as fast as you think, and if I thought you were going too hard, that was so we would end up managing the races. We got better the more races we had run together. On the bright side, guys, the car didn't look like it was damaged. You know, when you have a right front tire failure and it doesn't tear the right front fender off, I think that's a win in a bad situation. It could have been much worse. Parker. Well, guys, we've talked about the heat the drivers are experiencing inside the cars. We saw that temperature gauge of Age Owner at 144 degrees. Well, check this out. This is the iPad I use on It's too hot right now but it's actually overheating. We have our iPads overheating down here. So I'm gonna go find some ice to put this on because we gotta take notes on this. This is how I keep track of all the cars I have here on Pit Lone, and it's right now not working. So even, park, pit, park, even pit Road is uh, suffering from the heat. Alex Bowman in the 88s making great time. He's running on Highline. Maybe they should think twice about it as we saw Kyle Larson have a right front tire issue running that Highline. I think that's a good point, Rick. You know, with six to go in this stage, what's the big picture? Do we want Jeff, to maybe slow down just a little bit here and take a little bit of time, or do you need these playoff points, these stage points enough where you're just going to keep pushing? I think you have to argue the opposite. He has zero points. He enters at 2,000. I think these are the risks that 88 has to take. I don't think he has afforded the opportunity to be conservative, right? He had 26 weeks to build himself a little bit of a cushion. He did not do that. I know it's a risk, but I think he has to fight for every point in this first round. Steve, they just told him a couple laps ago, take it easy. The 42 just lost the right front, so he knows. Marty. Rick, I want to show you what Jeff Burton was talking about. You can see the outer casing of the tire for Kyle Larson obliterated, but the inner liner, the Goodyear mandates, that's what saved that right front fender. He was able to ride around on that inner liner, saving the right front fender. So, Jeff, you're right. The right front fender on the 42 doesn't look that bad, and it's because of that inner liner. Well, that's a good break for those guys in a bad situation. They did catch a good break. But how about this race? They told Alex Bowman, hey, take it easy, but I don't think he listened. He's still digging hard. Do race car, race car drivers ever listen when someone says take it easy? Rarely. <laughs> to be Coming clear, they rarely listen at any point. <laughs> so the battle continues for the third spot. Kurt Busch has it. Alex Bowman's trying to take it. Look at this replay of the 78. Hits something. Uh, looks like a, a brake, brake hose. hose. Yep. I'm guessing off the 42. That left, that flat right front tire would pull that hose off. Bowman took that spot from Kurt Busch. Trying it's a nervous complete. times, two to go, coming to the end of the stage. You know, you have tire problems. You really just want to make sure you get to the end of the stage without an issue. Well, Bowman doesn't have anybody in front of him, not a position close enough to try to achieve. So this is where he could get that information from his crew chief to, hey, man, hold this position. Back it down 90% or 80%. Yeah, that's not a gamble now. Now it's just silly. You know, now now you now you have to manage it. Or maybe they're fast enough where he has backed it down. Maybe we're going to see Alex Bowman <laughs> drive this thing to the front in a little while. Alex Bowman running third. Martin Truex Jr. out front, now under two laps to go. Final lap of stage one. Truex Jr. and Harvick running one and two. Alex Bowman about 4.7 seconds behind race leader Martin Truex Jr. So those two have checked out. Truex Jr. and Harvick, just like Harvick did in the spring race here earlier. He was able to check out. Harvick won the first stage and the second stage and then went on to win the race. Well, now Martin Truex Jr., as he exits turn four, is looking to win stage one at Las Vegas. And there is another Great. playoff That's point. Stage winner, MPJ, come on. And a battle there for position between Kyle Busch and Chase Elliott. And Elliott noses Kyle Busch right at the line for fifth. Every point matters, and that's what they're fighting for. Two thousand seventeen champion Martin Truex Jr. 
with all of the things happening. The team closing down for that 78 car. Mark Trex Jr. goes out and wins stage one of the playoffs. Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Las Vegas. It's the South Point 400. You can get access to the NASCAR playoffs like never before when you sign up for premium access to NASCAR Mobile. This weekend only upgrade for $1.99. You're going to unlock live driver audio, enhanced telemetry, so many things that you can take advantage of. Search NASCAR in your app store and you'll never miss a minute of the action like the action that took place for the battle for fifth. Every point matters. Take a look at what happened here. Kyle Busch, Chase Elliott. Inside, inside. All the way down to the apron to take that spot away, and that's how tight it was. That's that one extra point for Chase Elliott. If he gets into this next round, <laughs> yeah, by one point. You, you tied. Was it you right in there? McMurray? I mean, someone tied that you on here. I mean, we've seen ties at the end of this round. And the crews now will get ready. It's all on their shoulders. Cars will come in, and they want to make sure that they get them out at least as good as where they came in, maybe sometimes even better. Rick, and you, we talk about the nerves a lot for the drivers and the crew chiefs. Well, these guys, these guys they feel it too. They know uncontrolled tire penalties have been up this, like the last five or six weeks. Loose wheels have been a trend all year long. Violations, slow stops. It's one thing under green. It's another thing when everybody's on pit road together. It doesn't have to be a violation, just a slow pit stop. If you're one or two seconds slower, it could be 10 positions. I'm really gonna be watching that 20 of Eric Jones. Remember they had an issue on the first pit stop with that left front tire. Is that gonna be a chronic issue all day? The other thing, on the hot days like this, the driver tends to take a little bit of break, get some air. Sometimes you lose a little focus, and you make a mistake on pit road. Can't have that happen. And here comes Martin Shrex Jr. leading everyone onto pit road. Dave. 
Nine stage points for Kevin Harvick finishing second there. He is at the first pit stall at pit in. His car was a little bit loose. He'll get a chassis adjustment and air pressure along with his tires and fuel. For Alex Bowman, a little bit of a loose race car also, Marty. Martin Truex Jr. kind of slowed down in those last few laps, Dave, at the end of stage one because he said the right rear pretty much gone. He said, the only thing I need, I don't need much, I just need those rears to hang with me a little bit longer. So Cole Pern going to do an air pressure adjustment here. He also wants some water. And if you saw that shot we had of A.J. Allmendinger's car a moment ago, it's 156 degrees inside these cars. These drivers working hard. And working hard as well as the crews as we see the race off pit road brought to you by Kroger click list and how about the stop for Alex Bowman's crew they put him in front of Logano Elliott and Harvick Alex Bowman moves up to second Hey, race fans, when in Las Vegas, stay where the racers stay at the South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa, your ultimate pit stop on the Las Vegas Strip. South Point, everything you want, all under one roof. Already a great day of racing. Stage one complete for more on the racing. Let's go to the Peacock Pit Box and Chris Devoto. Yeah, Rick, immediately following our coverage here in Las Vegas, we're going to head to Sonoma, where there is a four-way battle for the championship. It's a season finale. That's Will Power. He drives for Roger Penske. Penske actually has two drivers in the championship for Joseph Newgarden missed practice. Uh, one practice had nothing to do with the fact that he has food poisoning. Talk about overcoming adversity. Alexander Rossi, the American, uh, trying to win his first title. He'll have to upend Scott Dixon, who's going for five championships. He drives for Chip Ganassi. So it's going to be fantastic here in Las Vegas. NASCAR's playoffs just beginning. 16 drivers trying to become the championship for in Sonoma for IndyCar. It all ends today, tonight. You will see it where there are four championship drivers. Now, Power and New Garden mathematically still eligible. It is a long shot, but these this race is worth double points. So you cannot just hand it to Scott Dixon. Alexander Rossi has been incredibly fast the last month. Scott Dixon riding the consistency. Lee Diffie and the gang are going to have it for you. Sonoma Raceway, not that far away. It is just such a great day for motorsports here on NBCSN. So as soon as we're finished here in Vegas, we don't know who's going to win this race. It looks like it'll be one of the championship 16 drivers. You can just keep it right here because the championship will be decided in IndyCar tonight. Yeah, Chris, so right now the top 11 are all 
championship contenders, a part of the playoffs. McMurray wedged in there in 12th. And you have Hamlin and Johnson, 13th and 14th. The lowest running championship contender, Kyle Larson, 22nd. He took the wave around to get back on the lead lap. Let's see Martin Drake Jr. taking that top groove. I like that. Where has Alex Bowman been making his time? He's been making his time at the top of the racetrack, so force him to restart on the bottom. Alex wasn't even beside the 78 when the green flag came out. Oh, the nine goes up the racetrack. Had to get out of the gas, and cars continue to go by him. He's going to lose six, eight, ten spots down the backstretch. Oh, that's so frustrating, too. You had that track position, and then you lose it all in one corner. Now you got so much work to do to go get it back. Chase Elliott trying to take a spot back from the 18 of Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch so strong early in this race and then has not been able to keep that speed up. We're seeing already Jamie McMurray in the one drive the high line and he's trying to get some speed early in this second stage. Rick, I think that's impressive for a couple reasons. Remember, Jamie McMurray didn't make the playoffs, but also it was reported a couple weeks ago that he won't be back at Chip Ganassi Racing full time. He has the option perhaps to run the Daytona 500. Doesn't sound like he's going to take that option. So still wants to come out and have a good race as we have a caution on the racetrack. Big, big benefit for the 42 of Kyle Larson. You just told us, Rick, he took the wave around. Now he can pit, get some fresh tires, and be on the lead lap. And caution out for Debris in three and four. And that becomes uh, probably the debris coming off of the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. to see how much damage to the right side of that car. Sound like I heard him say something broke. Hit the wall hard, obviously. Trying to clear the fender, but look at all the way up into the wall early is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in that 17. So quite a bit of damage for the 17 team. So he put right sides on trying to stay in the lead lap, but they didn't stay in the lead lap. They got past. He seems to think they did. Maybe they did. I don't know. I never got a call from NASCAR. Looked like to me the leader's passed him. There he goes. He's slowing down. So would have been better off just to stay on pit road and work on the car. But that's easy for me to say up here. I've noticed that. My vantage point up here would have been way easier to make those decisions, Jeff. <laughs> Here's what happened to the nine car on this restart. Teammate, 88. Put him in some dirty air, you know. Didn't do it on purpose. That's just what happens. He had a run on the top, got up in behind the 88 car and lost the nose, lost the grip in the car, had to lift. And when, like you said, Jeff, when you have to lift on these restarts, you're going to lose a lot of spots. They're hard to get back. I mean, this is the best of the best up here in the top 10. And again, under caution for the second time today, the Monster Energy Cup Series playoffs. They continue next week at Richmond. You can be there for the first ever NASCAR playoffs race weekend. The contenders will battle under the lights in some classic short track action. Visit NASCAR.com slash tickets to purchase your tickets today. And a reminder, our own Dale Earnhardt Jr. will be racing that weekend in the Xfinity Series. Man, you ready? Yeah, got my seat sorted out. Got in the car last week. Ready to go, man. Should be a lot of fun. Oh, we'll be watching. Yeah. <laughs> Marty. Oh, you can feel the fist bumps down here for the 42 when that caution came out so early here in stage two. They also have a little bit of extra time here to fix that right front fender. They're going to take on four fresh Goodyear tires. Kyle Larson back in the game. 91 laps in the book here at Vegas as we continue the first playoff race. Back for more in a moment.
Monster Energy Cup Series Racing from Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Kelly. It was such Chase Elliott lose a handful of spots on that last restart. He said, sorry guys, I had a big old run going. Obviously didn't work out. See if he does better here. Field going through the Geico restart zone, back up through the gears. Joe Mark Trex Jr., Alex Bowman, one and two. Logano making it three wide now for fourth. And Alex Bowman did better on that restart also. He's alongside the 78. Really good launch by Alex. There you go, Alex, drive it in there. Take the win, take the lead here from old former champion. And Martin Trex Jr. is going to drive by him on the high side. Yeah, Trix ran him tight and won it in three and four. Took the side force off that car. That allowed Kevin Harvick to get a run on the 88 as he lost the grip. Also allowed Brad Keselowski to get up here in this battle. Hadn't seen Brad inside the top 10 all day long. Here he is. A couple, good, couple good restarts. Sorry, a couple good restarts, and he's actually gained a lot of spots here. Well, now the 88's in the middle of the racetrack. We saw him making up most of his ground in the middle and the high part of the racetrack. Will he move up there early in this run? No, he, 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 do, he can't move up there, it's too early. Field will just make so much time on the bottom. You have to wait till around you know, 15, 20 laps into the run. You say that, but the one of Jamie McMurray, who's back about six or seven positions, he comes into the top of your screen, is running the absolute fence with some success. Eric easily clears the 20, and now he's gonna look for more positions into turn three. And the nine has moved up there as well. Chase Elliott has decided he wants to try the high line. Parker. Well, Rick, I spoke to Jay McMurray this morning about this exact thing. One racing against all these playoff drivers. He said, you know, for me, I don't care. It's a normal race. I don't really pay attention to who's in the playoffs or not. But also, you may have noticed that that one car has been a lot faster in the last couple weeks. He said, you know, it's interesting. We changed one really small thing, and suddenly we had all this speed. He goes, you notice the 42 cars faster? They changed it, too. Door to door, Clint Boyer in the 14, Chase Elliott in the nine. Well, Clint didn't give Chase much room, kept him pinched off a little bit, took that air off to the right side of his car. See right there, Jamie had to lift just a little bit. He ran up on the nine, getting into turn one, had to lift, slowed his momentum down. That allowed Eric Jones to drive underneath him, but Jamie on that outside, he's digging on the outside of Chase. So many question marks entering this playoffs for the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. Well, welcome to the top 10. Here comes Jimmy Johnson and the 48. I asked some of the other drivers on an event Thursday, hey, how do you rate you know, Jimmy Johnson? I asked him himself. I said, listen, you're a long shot. Is that fair as a seven-time champion? And Clint Boyer interrupted me and said, don't wake the sleeping giant. Let this be so those other competitors know. While the numbers may not be impressive, for Jimmy Johnson in 2018. Parker, they all understand how dangerous this team has been for so many years. No doubt, Steve, but when you talk to this race team, they kind of know the position they're in. They tell you consistently that in this first round, they have got to just simply score points. And now where he's running is very important. He's 10th, the last stage point. And Chad Kanaus told him before this last restart, you're in 13th, you're so close to those stage points. Go up there and get them, buddy. And now, teams from the same organization, the nine of Chase Elliott and the 48 of Jimmy Johnson, nose to tail, running ninth and 10. ATN Kyle Busch, keep talking about how hot it is. Well, this is the pit stop. They hand him two bags of ice, takes one of them, puts them underneath his leg, sets his leg on it, then he puts one just in his uniform to put it on his heart to cool his heart down. And then Denny Hamlin, just one ice bag, putting it on his chest. And A.J. Allmendinger, same thing. You can see he's got the water just dumping it down the front of him. And it's over, oh, it's over 150 degrees inside that car. Hey, good news is only 100, how many laps we got left to go? 166. That's all, 166. And Kyle Busch running 11. Again, we talked about the temperature comparison from when they ran here earlier this year in March. 58 degrees was the high temperature on that day. Right now, it's 101 degrees. And I want to tell you, inside that helmet of Kyle Busch, it's hotter. Because he's in 11. And that's not where Kyle Busch expects to be running. Open around of the playoffs, outside of the top 10. 
This is not what this team is about, and I can promise you he is not happy. There's Bowman to the top of the racetrack now, and he's going to clear the 14 of Clint Boyer. Dave. Rick, he slipped back to the sixth position on that restart. And on the first two times they came down pit road, the right front tire that came off did have some damage to it. A Goodyear official told me he was the only one on pit road with that type of damage. I checked with the team to see if maybe they had increased the air pressure in that right front now. They have. That's how you can make it last. That's been a good change for the 88. Well, there's another way you can also help that right front tire, and they made this adjustment on the pit stop, Dave, which is come down you can always adjust track bar wedge air pressure those are good things but watch right here this tire care goes back around he's going to reach down right underneath the right front headlight look at this pull just a little little piece of tape off right there you saw it what is that about an inch and a half hole right in the green area get some air to that right front corner the brakes the tire that will help that tire lift but this right here this trash that could be a concern on a hot day we'll have to watch that water temperature rick yeah martin trex jr still out in front of the field here in vegas Laps remain in stage two of Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Las Vegas, the South Point 400. And hey, NASCAR fans, if you want more chances to win a fan-built Chevy, Ford, or Toyota truck, go to nascar.com slash playoffs promo and enter the promo code playoffs to get 10 extra chances to win the truck of your choice. But don't wait, this bonus offer ends today. That's promo code playoffs and we're actually a part of the ferris wheel right now in turn four what a great job las vegas motor speedway and everyone does here for the fans giving them the turn four turn up and giving them a great experience of monster energy cup series racing as martin Truex jr has a 1.6 second lead over kevin harvick who's running second keselowski is third kurt bush fourth logano fifth and all the way back in six now is Alex Bowman. There you see him passing Clint Boy for position earlier just a few laps ago. Got some trash on the front of that grill. Caution's out here. Caution's come out and slow car in turn one and two. That's Ty Dillon in the 13. Not bad. We can probably keep running. Just keep driving around. Ty was running 29th at the time that this caution has come out. You see damage to the right side. And there goes the right front. The tire, the shell of the tire has just come off. Uh, one of the right side tires is kind of slid off, so we're going to have to try and 
Jack, pull the car up. Remember, we mentioned the inner liner. Anytime they run on a racetrack a mile and above, the speeds that these cars turn will uh, be required to run an inner liner. So we saw the shell of the tire come off. There's a replay. What happened to 13? Todd Hill. Down the front straight away. Whoa. Man. Flat tire. Yeah, you forget the front stretch is curved until you have a flat tire and the car <laughs> goes straight. Then you yeah. realize how much curve there is to that wall. And as you know, it gets more rubber on this racetrack, the track gets tighter. The guys got to adjust for that to keep the right front tire on the car. Literally, as we saw the right front tire come off of the car. Dave. Nice pickup for the two of Brad Keselowski. The four of Kevin Harvick has been fast, but Brad was running down around 13, 14, 15. Now he's back up into the top three. Harvick doesn't need much of an adjustment on that four. He's running fast, Marty. Truex Jr., the leader coming down pit road, Dave. He said same thing with the car. Starts a little bit tight, but it frees up, comes to me nicely. So Cole Pern going to make no changes other than those four fresh Goodyear tires and Sunoco fuel, and they did get Martin another water bottle. Again, awfully hot inside these race cars. Kozlowski looks like he's going to win the race off pit road. He'll gain two spots. Martrex Jr. drops one. Joey Logano, also from Penske, in the top three. They're looking for win number 500 for that organization. Look at that. Debris on the grill of the 88. He was lucky enough to be able to get that off. Got behind Clint Boyer, got up close. Here it is. Debris goes away. Lucky move for him. Good, smart play. Won't be overheating now. Tonight on NBC, Sunday Night Football. Eli Manning and the Giants visit Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. An NFC East battle. Both teams looking to bounce back from opening week losses. Football night in America, that's 7 p.m. Eastern. And kickoff at a new time, 8.20 p.m. only on NBC. That is the future home of the Raiders. They are coming to Las Vegas.
Well, the 18 of Kyle Busch had to make a second trip down pit road because they needed to put some lug nuts. We saw instantly right after the pit stop, Cam Wall, the front tire changer here, he has his hands up, he knows, nope, we need to come in. And then that's the sign you never want to see as a crew member, Parker. Three, three fingers tells me he knows he only got three lug nuts tight. Exactly, Steve. And another thing to note is that on their first stop today, he noted how his initial front gun had an issue. So he's actually working with the backup gun now here on the 18 team. Just a couple issues down here. A little different philosophy on this restart for Martin Truex Jr. He's going to restart on the bottom. He's got Brad Keselowski, a veteran, on the outside, not Alex Bowman on the front row. We'll see how this works out. It's be important for these guys going forward to pay attention what line succeeds here. Bill coming into the Geico restart zone. Keslowski, the advantage as they were going into turn one, but here comes the 78 of Mark Trex Jr. fighting back on the inside. Oh, look at Brad. He's got the speed off the corner. He's going to be able to take this position. Harvick's coming with him on the outside. And I really didn't feel good about that restart from Truex taking that inside line. Well, I don't think he took it. I think Brad beat him off pit road. Oh, that's remember? right. So Brad was Brad, the control car. That yeah. makes more sense to me. Yeah, Brad was the control <laughs> car. Brad utilizing that win off of pit road to keep the lead as Brad Kozlowski now in front of Martin Truex Jr. Kurt Busch is up into the top three. Joey Logano, Clint Boyer, and look at Logano using the middle of the racetrack to make up ground. Harvick had an issue off turn four. So he's back there in sixth place now. He's still struggling with those guys on that left rear quarter panel. Making his car tight through three and four. Jamie McMurray has, I mean, he is committed to the high part of the racetrack. He has run on the top of the track in one and two and in the top of the track in three and four. Rick, you couldn't have said it better. This is the definition of commitment. He doesn't care. New tires, old tires, restart, long run. He has to give up the entry speed. So you watch right here, the 88 will dive to the bottom. He can drive in the corner harder. The one will go, but now the one's already back to wide open throttle and watch how good it makes this car look down the straightaway. Looks like he has way more horsepower. Yeah, Eddie Bowman did such a good job on the bottom right there. Didn't really show it that much, Steve. Surprised Alex Bowman could carry that much speed compared to McMurray on the top. That top groove is gonna work on the restarts for a couple laps until everybody starts to get clean air in front of them and can work that bottom groove. He's taking advantage of these guys as they're all trying to get to the bottom and checking each other up. See, now he's going to the bottom as he sees that advantage has gone away to be able to use that top on the restarts. Alex Bowman took the top away from him. He went up high, and McMurray now has moved in front of Bowman. McMurray into ninth. Hey guys, just to add on to what you're saying there about Jamie McMurray, guess what he said on the radio? One, this car's working really well up top, and he's very happy with the balance. As you can see, he's making up a lot of time up there right now. Junior, I just have to ask, you and I have had this conversation. You know, I never knew how much pressure there was just being a crew chief. Until that year, I didn't have any. I knew I was leaving at the end of the year. I thought I did my best work. Well, how about Jamie McMurray? He knows he's done at the end of this year. Is he just, the pressure's off. He, didn't, he knows he didn't make the playoffs. Is this just Jamie McMurray? having a good time running the top whatever it takes for the longest time it didn't look like that you know him and the 42 their teams worked re really close together the, the speed in the 42 was there but never you never saw it in the one car but over the last, ever since probably mid-season they started to pick up pace and kind of show that competitiveness that we see from from larson and we're seeing it here today Kevin Harvick lost spots coming off of pit road and then on the restart not a great restart for Kevin Harvick the frustration coming through listen to his radio. Well, that's really all you need to hear. Yeah, that was all we needed to hear it <laughs> absolutely not will not turn and it, you know it's so frustrating because he had a good restart and had track position we saw him battling for second place he came off turn four and lost it all. Just, you know everybody drove underneath him and he knows how hard it is to get track position on top of the, the issues with his car. They've also given spots up on pit road every time they pit. So they've given up positions and given up track position, and it's so, so difficult to ever get it back once you lose it. Steve, one of the other questions I have, now seven laps into this run, there's 38 to go in the stage. Will they have to worry a little bit about the right side tires and maybe that right front tire, which we've seen issues already today? Uh, you know, they're going to run about 45 laps. I think if you have seen issues, you're going to have to continue to take care of them. But if your car hasn't shown any issues, you should be fine for the rest of the day, I would imagine. 
And we're just talking about Kevin Harvick in the spots he lost off turn four. Well, here he is battling with Martin Truex. You just hear him. He's not able to stay in the gas. They was battling for second and a little bit off the throttle, and here they come. They just freight train him, and in one corner, you lose all those spots. And battle for the lead. Fight for the lead. Here comes Martin Trex Jr. He's been most comfortable down on the bottom of the racetrack. The two of Keselowski trying to take that line away and stay in front of him. Now all the way to the apron. Truex Jr. Can he hold that position? Hold that line as Keselowski goes to the middle of the track. Truex Jr. Can't get back to the gas as quickly as the two of Keselowski, but will he have enough? He clears the two and now Truex Jr. in front. Marty, Martin Truex Jr. already 53 laps up in front. And on cue, Rick, we are now 10 laps into this run. It takes about 10 laps for the 78 car really to come to life. They are so strong on those long runs. And as you mentioned, Rick, committed to the bottom of the racetrack today. The one thing Martin told me he was worried about, Dave, short runs. He said if it comes down to a short run, and he's proved it so far, we could be in trouble. Marty, the winner of the last two races is back to second place. And when I talked to Paul Wolf about that possible momentum, he said, no, that's true. We have some momentum in the two, but we've still got to be true about our realistic expectations. We are still a tenth off speed wise, and it's runs like that from the 78 that give you that realistic impression still. Thirteen car of Ty Dillon went back behind the wall and into the garage while we continue under green flag racing. Martin Trex Jr. a six tenth of a second lead over Keselowski. Joey Logano just in front of Clint Boyer. So Martin Truex Jr. continues to lead this field. Just drove away from Keselowski, but back in the field. Look at William Byron up against the wall, trying to make time contact though. Gonna have to stay off that wall, Rick. You're watching Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Las Vegas Motor Speedway. 28 laps to go in stage two. Let's take a look at the Toyota Camry on track car. 
Well, this heat today, Rick, has created a situation where these teams have got to try to cool the drivers down. And uh, we see the drivers putting ice bags on their chest, dumping water on them. And the other way to do it is just bring air into the car. So as we roll around this car, on the left side, you can see there's one opening right there, that Nacadec, it's open. And it's required by NASCAR to be open to put air into the cars, because if not, the crew chiefs, Rick, they don't care about the drivers. They would not have that air going in the car. It gives a little bit of a break. And then optionally, you can have another NACA duck, and that blows air either to the driver or into the driver's head cooler, which cools the air going into the helmet. Few ways to get the driver cool. Rick, it's not that we don't care. It's that you know what cools the car the best? A win? When it drives the best. It's it just It doesn't physically cool it, but they, they are much happier. They don't care, Rick. Seems as though Ryan Blaney making a little bit of a rebound here after his issues earlier in the race. Yeah, Ryan Blaney, we saw him on pit road. We saw Eric Amarola and he made contact and put him into the wall and he came down pit road, did some work. Now he's driven back up to the front, Marty. It's been a fantastic recovery for this 12 car. Losing a couple of spots here, but the car is getting a little bit too tight for him right now. But they have fixed that right front damage. And I think they thought they had to come into this race, Steve, and they needed to gain points this weekend because Ryan will admit, Richmond, his worst track on the schedule by far. And then you've got the Charlotte Road Course. So they put a lot of pressure on themselves here at Las Vegas to gain points and gain a lot of them. Well, Marty, I don't know if there would be a bigger win in the series than if Jimmy Johnson could end his career longest winless streak. And for that to happen, guys, you got to have a fast race car, make good decisions, and sometimes you got to get a little lucky right here. A clear bag on the nose of the 48 easily could overheat. He gets up behind the 12, does a nice job there, and instantly you'll watch the air pressure disappear. The bag goes away. The 48 should come back down to normal operating temperatures after that. Seems like the 48, that whole organization, Getting better as this track is getting more and more rubber on it. They've struggled all weekend really finding the speed they've wanted, but after the first run in this race, we've got a lot of rubber down on the track. We're seeing some teams that were strong at the start of the race fade a little bit. The Gibbs cars, Kyle Busch, the 20, Eric Jones, those guys are struggling as this track's getting tighter, Jeff, and we're seeing other teams starting to move to the front. We're starting to see a shift. One thing we do see, though, is all Penske cars are in the, they're all in the top 10 right now, and. This would be the sixth straight race that every Penske car could finish in the top ten. This has been a very, very good racetrack for them. And you mentioned how good are they at Vegas? Well, Keselowski, two wins, 95 laps led for Logano, and three straight top ten finishes for Ryan Blaney. And again, they're searching for that 500th win for Team Penske in all forms of motorsports that they are a part of. They were kind of going backwards when this race started. That first run, made some adjustments. Tracks changed just a little bit. Seems to be coming to those guys. Keselowski in second, Logano in fourth. Kelly. You guys talk about the strength there of Team Penske. I talked to crew chief on the 22, Todd Gordon and Joey Logano. Both asked him what it would mean to them to be the ones to give Roger Penske and Team Penske the 500th win. They said it would be awesome, especially as the two team, their teammates, have been able to capitalize on two of the crown jewels. Hey, another note, we've been talking about some of the troubles on pit road. Well, it's been the opposite case here for this 22 team. Todd Gordon told me they struggled a lot through the summer, but have built up some really nice momentum headed here into the playoffs. Two stops today. They picked up six spots on pit road, which has really helped their cause to stay in the top five. Well, Kelly, you mentioned how important pit road is. It's time for the playoffs. Everyone needs to step up. Joey Logano, Brad Kozlowski, T. Penske gaining spots while Kevin Harvick is losing. Five doesn't seem like much, but Dale, one row and a restart could be all the difference. Now you're back there in dirty air. Your car doesn't drive as good. Very difficult to recover. Keselowski's done some great work on these last couple of restarts to gain a ton of track position. You get that track position, it's easier to hold. To get up there in that clean air inside the top three. Brad, been doing that last couple of weeks. What's won in these two races over the last couple of weeks? Yeah, and when they... What does he say? He wants to be the guy that catches the ball. Well, two weeks in a row, his team's kind of tossed it to him, and Brad delivered. And momentum's so big. Brad Keselowski winning the last two races, both crown jeweled. But the odds of Brad Keselowski winning three races in a row in a 40-car field is 1 in 64,000. So he's against the odds, but at the same time, he's proving everyone or proving to everyone that he can get it done after winning the Southern 500 and the Brickyard 400 in back-to-back -back races.
Kevin Harvick trying to get back on track as he's running fifth now chasing after Martin Truex Jr. just like everyone else on the track. The winner of stage one Martin Truex Jr. out in front. Brad Keselowski Kurt Busch Joey Logano Kevin Harvick top five. Martin Truex Jr. 2017 champion. You can see it coming. Yes, we know what's wrong. And a wreck just happening. The four of Kevin Harvick up into the wall. The 20 nowhere to go. Got up underneath him. Big damage for here. two Here's playoff up. contenders. And I saw Kevin Harvick for about a lap. He started losing positions. They were going by him on the outside. He was very slow on the bottom. Clearly, I'd say he had a right front starting to come apart. He just got looked like he got tighter and tighter and one into one had his issue. And we mentioned this earlier. Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch started with a 50 point advantage over drivers like Alex Bowman and Jimmy Johnson because of the playoff points. But we knew that that could only help them for one race. Now that advantage gets eliminated because of what's happening here. Kevin Harvick out of the car. Eric Jones didn't want to see this either. Two playoff contenders and out before the end of stage two. See the anger. Eric Jones just nowhere to go. We're going to take a look at the replay here off to turn one. Oh, the yeah, right front. Right front unraveling. What you can't see or feel is the 20 car gets in the back of the four here once he's in the fence. Well, that's a sickening sound when that thing comes apart. It's like a bomb goes off in there. It scares you to death. And then here comes Eric Jones. And both of these guys, you said it, Rick. It's, this is the first race of the playoffs, and Eric Jones does not have a whole lot of playoff points. Kevin Harvick does have some, but already before the end of the second stage in the first race, both of these guys have a lot of ground to make up. 
How fortunate for the 88 and the 48. They're in front of the four, because he was coming up the racetrack straight regardless. Same unfortunate thing for the 20. Bad, bad timing. And they had just gotten by him off of turn yep. two. He had all kinds of issue off turn four. Then he went to turn two. And you could see he was having a major problem and just had lost all kinds of speed. And then the next time through there, it came apart. Look at the points. The 20 with that crash and the position that he will be in now, 14 points behind that cutoff line at the end of the third race of this round. And Rick, we talk about the value of the regular season. There it is. The four car has a dominant regular season. The 20 of Eric Jones won a race, but not but nowhere near the si type of numbers that the big three. That's the difference. That's plus 39 to minus 14. This system rewards the first 26 races. It's just not entering the playoffs. It's entering the playoffs with an extra bucket of points for just such a issue. issue. And they earned those points. They weren't given to them. They went out and earned them. They outran their competition, and they should be rewarded. I love that part of these points. Let's go to Dave. Brad Keselowski is on pit road running second. The car has been uh, a little bit free, so they've been working on tightening it up just a little bit, but they don't want to go over that edge. Same thing for Kurt Busch, a little bit loose most of the day. Slight air pressure adjustment for the 41. Marty? Same song, different verse from Martin Truex Jr. You said the car starts a little bit too tight, but comes to him nicely about 10 to 12 laps into the run. So once again, Cole Pern going to make no changes here for Truex other than tires and fuel for Truex, and we'll see if he can win the race off pit road this time with everyone taking four tires here pretty good stop for the one of Jamie McMurray he's going to make up some ground as they race off of pit road Keslowski Truex swapping positions Kurt Busch and McMurray gains one spot Alex Bowman also gaining a spot the disappointment huge for Kevin Harvick and Eric Jones two drivers now out with still 117 laps to go here in Vegas. NBCSN is brought to you by Ford. Going further so you can. Coca-Cola, the official fan refreshment of NASCAR. Credit One Bank, the credit card perfect for everyday purchases. And by Subway Restaurants.
and we knew that the intensity was going to ramp up because this being the first race of the playoffs, but I don't think we were expecting so many issues to happen before even the end of stage two. Yeah, it's been amazing how many things have happened, and it's mostly happened to people that are in the playoffs. And this started early. This On this day, Austin Dillon had to go to the back because of a penalty uh, before the race, so immediately he had an issue. Kyle Larson, right front tire down. He had to pit on the green. They had to work on some damage to the right front after that tire went down as well. Almirola and Ryan Blaney have an issue. Almirola comes up the racetrack. Ryan Blaney wanted to be there, and that put Blaney into the wall. He had to come in and fix his car. He's had a nice recovery so far. Then Kyle Busch on pit road. You can see his crew member saying, hey, I didn't get them all tight. Got to bring him back down pit road. So they come back down pit road and get the lug nuts tightened up. And then the most recent issue. Kevin Harvick, tire goes down up into the wall, and Eric Jones, nowhere to go but into the back of the four. So now, Kevin Harvick, Eric Jones, both out of this race. And now Eric Jones definitely in a deep hole. He's already 14 points behind the cutoff line of 12, but he's got two more races that he'll have to try to battle back. Let's bring in Steve Letarte and Dale Jr. Well, Rick. You mentioned the issues and what it has done to the playoff leaderboard. So you take a look, Eric Jones on minus 24. They cover the issues, but how about guys that are having good days? And this one right here, both of these guys come to mind. we got Chase Elliott and Alex Bowman. They needed good runs. They're having good days so far. That's right. One guy we saw have a right front tire issue early, Kyle Larson right here. You know what? He didn't give up. He's hanging in there. We're going to see guys have problems. All you got to do is beat four guys this round, just four, not everybody. So he's hanging in there, making that ground up. Eric Jones with his trouble, that's one guy out of the way almost if he can have a consistent round. Yeah. Kyle Larson's in. And Eric Amarola in the 10 car down at minus 16. He hasn't had any issues on the racetrack, just not having the day he's hoping for. Parker, we're only on the first race of a round of three, a crazy round, not even to the end of stage two yet. No doubt, Steve. But, you know, we saw earlier in the day that Jimmy Johnson was pouring water on himself before he got inside that 48 car. We'll take a listen to what he's had to say about pouring water and what his ice bags are doing. Jimmy, we're going to dump your water bottle in there this time, and then when we come back in at the stage, we'll give you the ice. How's that? I'm not sure I'm going to do the ice. I got a really hot right now. I don't know if that stuff's melted, boiling in my So I'm going to avoid putting it all over my chest like that. And there you heard the word boiling. That is how hot it is inside those cars. And what's happening is the water is coming around him in that seat and potentially getting so hot it's boiling around him, Marty. Eric Jones out of the infield care center. Parker, and this is not where we thought we would be interviewing the pole sitter for today's race. And I know it's a struggle handling wise for you guys. Just no time to react for you. And has your mind already started going to what needs to happen the next two weeks? Yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate. You know, it's uh, we didn't have the best handling to wall camera today, but we were going to end up OK with it. We were going to finish top 10, you know, no matter what. So it's uh, it's unfortunate we had that happen. You know, nothing Kevin can do and nothing we can do, unfortunately. So it's um, not the situation we need to be in. We didn't have any bonus points for us, and uh, we got some work to do now. So I don't think we got to win, but uh, we definitely got to run really well here in the Ro or next week in the Roval. So we'll uh, we'll keep at it. But, you know, it's just unfortunate that had had, had to happen. All right, here's the replay, and as you can watch it, I mean, there's really no time for you to react at all when Kevin gets into the wall. Yeah, I saw him blow the tire, but I had already, you know, committed to the top and running up there and trying to get in the corner. And unfortunately, it's hard to get slowed up and get to the bottom when you're carrying that much speed. So it's uh, it's unfortunate, not what you want, but uh, we'll keep after it. All right, Eric Jones out of the race early here, and uh, let's go over here and we're going to grab Kevin Harvick right now, and uh, we'll get a word with him. And uh, he's come out of the Infield Care Center as well. And uh, Kevin, boy, you didn't have much time at all. You didn't have any, how much notice did you have? Well, there was something wrong from the time we, we put the tires on. It's like Russian roulette every time you put these piece of crap tires on and try to drive around the racetrack. It's um, one time it's tight, one time it's loose, one time they're blistered. And, you know, we had a great car, and then you put a set of tires on, and you can't even hardly make it through the field. Just, just hate it for everybody on our mobile one Ford. For you guys, I know it was a frustrating day, obviously, but you told us before the race you're happy you had those 50 bonus points coming in. I'm not happy about anything right now. All right, Kevin, obviously very upset, and uh, there was a blown tire, right front blown tire for Kevin Harvick. Takes him out of the race. But again, go back to what he said pre-race, guys. He does have those 50 bonus points that now can lean on. He's talking about the tire. Came apart on one. Obviously frustrated. An interesting... We've seen it out of Kevin Harvick before, but had his right hand off the steering wheel again. When he was entering turn one, it almost looked like, well, I'm just you know, going to drive in here like normal. And 
no indication that that tire was going to go on him. Second he put his hand on the steering wheel, tire blows and up into the wall he went. Well, one thing this has done is set up quite a race here to the end of stage two. And you know, right now it's only five to go. So we're going to we're going to see another mid race battle to get a stage win here. These have been exciting. Yeah, exciting. And this is just the first race of the playoffs for the Monster Energy Cup Series. How about tonight on NBCSN? The Verizon IndyCar Championship is going to be decided. So the coverage of the Grand Prix of Sonoma will follow our race coverage at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Again, four drivers in contention for that title. And double points night tonight for the Verizon IndyCar Series. So well, Kez, oh, I'm sorry, Keselowski and Trex Jr. are going to start up front. Yeah, I was going to say, Jeff, you mentioned it. It's going to be a sprint, just four laps to the end of the second stage. And I mean, when you look at the guys up front, you mentioned Keselowski and Truex, Rick, but I continue to look at Bowman, Johnson, Elliott, guys that have a chance to score stage points. Where they come into these playoffs, these stage points can make all the difference. You got Hamlin. Hamlin and Austin Dillon in 14th and 15th, can they do something on this restart to jump into that top 10 and gain a couple points that they really need? And how about Keselowski, how he keeps putting himself in positions, won the last two races, didn't lead the most laps by any means, got himself there at the right time, and here he is again now leading this race with five to go for the end of the stage. Looking for another playoff point for Keselowski. And he could win that if he ends up winning this stage. But he's got four laps. Before that is determined, back up through the gears they go. Watch Jamie McMurray, that orange and black car. Watch him drive into turn one. He's going to probably go to the top, try to make something happen. McMurray right away went up high, and the two of Keselowski decided to block. That has put McMurray back a bit. But here comes the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. That's the speedy dry they used to put any fluid, get that off the track. That was what you saw behind the two. Side by side for position as Martin Trex Jr. has dropped back to fighting for third now. And the 48 of Jimmy Johnson right on the white line wants to take that position away. Rick, before that restart, the Keselowski team told him that the one will try that move to the high side. You need to try and block it. Good teamwork there by the two group. That's great information from the spotter. The spotter's been watching that one car all day. He knew where he was going to go. How about this battle, Jimmy Johnson? A little bit of a wiggle there out of Jimmy Johnson. That allows the 78 to take advantage and take that position away. And now it also opens the door for the 88 coming up behind the 22 and the 1. Oh, that's tight. Murray and Joey Logano. Logano's going to go to the middle of the racetrack. Jamie McMurray, who's been running that high line, now back to the bottom of the racetrack. One lap to go in stage two. Keselowski, Kurt Busch running one and two. Martin Trex Jr. comfortably in third. Jimmy Johnson fourth. Jamie McMurray fifth. Logano, Blaney, Bowman, Chase Elliott, and Kyle Larson all looking to get stage points. Another good run for Brad Keselowski. He keeps the momentum alive and will win stage two. And Chase Elliott right there. Great job by him to finish seventh past two people on the outside in three and four. And he does it again. We saw that in the end of stage one. Watch Chase Elliott. He got real aggressive. Watch him drive into turn three. Jumps on the outside of Bowman. Has so much momentum now on the outside of Blaney. Beats both of them to the line. Two more points for Chase Elliott, but more importantly, a playoff point for Brad Keselowski.
Stage two is over. The leaders are on pit road at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. The two car at top, Brad Keselowski, he won that stage. Just a slight adjustment for him. They like where it's at. Also for the 41, same thing. Don't get me too tight, but we maybe need to go a little bit in that direction, Marty. Dave Martin Truex Jr. finished that stage in third. They've debated on staying on the racetrack like some other teams did, but they come down pit road here. Truex saying his car was just a little bit too tight for him, so they're going to make an air pressure adjustment here on the 78 stop. And he also told Colburn earlier, I'm having trouble getting out of my box. There he has to work his way around the 24. Looks like they'll lose some spots again here on pit road, Rick. Two tire stop for the 12 of Ryan Blaney. He takes advantage of that and will get six spots off of pit road. Kozlowski drops one position. So Ryan Blaney trying a two tire stop to get track position. And now the 88 of Alex Bowman, an uncontrolled tire on pit road. You can't make mistakes and hope to advance from round one to round two. Rick, we have seen a rash of these over the last five or six weeks. NASCAR has said, look, we have got to make this a very definite call. And it's within an arm's reach. They want to see a pit crew member within the arm's reach of a tire as they go from the right half of the pit box to the left. It's a balls and strike call. NASCAR has to make it. We've seen many teams get busted. I can't think of a worse time for the 88 of Alex Bowman having such a great day. Had that track position, everything going correct. Now he's going to give all that track position up to start the final stage. Again, a great day of racing. Not a great day right now for Alex Bowman, but he can recover. Right now, he has to try to fight back after this pit road penalty. I mentioned great day of racing. It's going to continue even after this race. Let's go back to the Peacock pit box and Chris Devota. Thanks, Rick. Yeah, with Brad Kozlowski winning that stage, Ryan Blaney with that tire strategy, you have to think about the fact that a Penske driver is going for win number 500. We're showing you the four drivers right now who are racing for the championship in the IndyCar Series. It includes two Penske drivers, Will Power and Joseph Newgarden. So, yes, there's a championship. That's why we're going to tune in at 6.30 Eastern on NBCSN as soon as we're done. And it is Scott Dixon's to lose uh, for Chip Ganassi. He has a 29-point advantage over Alexander Rossi. But if Joey Logano, Brad Kozlowski, or Ryan Blaney can't win here, which would be huge, it would be Roger Penske's 500th win, then all eyes turn to Sonoma, where it could be one of the three drivers that drives for Roger there, those two in the championship and Simon Pagano. Roger has already said whoever gets it is going to do get something big, something special. Some of his drivers suggested, hey, how about we use your private plane? We'll have to see what happens. Tune in tonight, right after we're finished here in Vegas. Rutledge? Krista, the turn four turn up party is insane. There's a Ferris wheel. They built a pool right here next to the grandstand and all these fans are over here for free having a great time. You get an amazing view of the track. There are food trucks, there's margarita stands, there's games for everything to play and you are literally right here on top of the track. An amazing view, something really cool Las Vegas Motor Speedway did this year. Turn four is completely turned up, you guys. And we know that Rutledge is always going to find the fun place around a racetrack. And Las Vegas Motor Speedway didn't disappoint. They have given the fans an opportunity to enjoy themselves while still enjoying some great racing. And we have definitely seen some amazing things happen already early in this race. Now two stages complete. And so we're looking forward to the third and final stage. And really momentum has to go to Brad Keselowski. He seems like he has got things going at the right time after winning the Southern 500, the Brickyard 400, now looking very strong here at Las Vegas. Yeah, and they've done a great job the last few weeks. Really, but prior to the last few weeks, you really didn't hear his name very much. And all you heard about, you know, he and his crew chief were talking about, we have to find a way. We don't have the speed. Well, they found a way. And they keep putting themselves in position and taking advantage of those opportunities. We've seen it the last two wins, and we saw it on that stage win also. Feels a little mixed up right now, though, with some people staying out, few people put two tires on so this restart's probably gonna be a little wild and again this is the first time that the playoffs have started here in Las Vegas the first time that they've come here for a second time Brad Keselowski with two wins trying to make that three and three in a row let's bring in Steve and Dale Jr. well Jeff you mentioned that this restart should be a bit chaotic with guys staying on the racetrack the 42 of Kyle Larson has trying to recover he had that tire issue early got back in the lead lap now they're trying to get that track position to me, though, this is the longest stage. We've seen some attrition issues already with tires, just some bad luck for Eric Jones. 
who can avoid that on this crazy restart. Yeah, we're about those guys not pitting and taking tires because of the tires issues we've had. But they're talking about Brad Keselowski. He's been accumulating a lot of playoff points. But Jimmy Johnson, who saw this happening today? This guy's in the top five and legitimately running there. Has this team, has this organization found what they needed to contend in the playoffs? Yeah, the 88 was up front, had the speed. He just had a penalty. Is there enough time to recover? We're going to have to see as this last stage wears on Parker. Well, guys, Kyle Busch is one of those cars who stayed out, did not agree with where he was placed on the racetrack. Take a, like a, take a listen. You said I got him at the stripe. What happened to that? I don't know. You, you nosed them to the stripe for sure. Right, so how did he get the spot on me? And the car he is referencing is that of the six of Trevor Bain. So he felt like he should have been in third place and had been able to put himself on the outside for this restart and said he finds himself on the inside, Marty. Parker Steven Jr. talked about it a moment ago. Kyle Larson, yes, back on the front row after losing that right front tire early. The car has been quick, and they decided to stay out. Their last stop was at lap 150. But see, that's going to put them in a little bit of a box. If they run normal here, they'll have to run about 65 laps on that last stop. So that's going to make a very long window for the end of this race if it stays green for this 42 car. Well, Marty, I'll be honest. I'm not sure they need to worry about the fuel window. After seeing what happened to Kevin Harvick, after seeing the tires that come off the right front of the 88 early, I think if I'm a crew chief, I'm going to break this up on two stops. I'm going to try to make sure I keep fresh tires on my car. Can't afford another blown tire, especially in the playoffs, guys. Issue for the 43 has put Bubba Wallace behind the wall and back in the garage. So McMurray has decided he'll stay out, and he'll give this a big swing. Larson, McMurray making up row one. find out how important new tires are. Look at Mark Trex Jr. on that top groove. Taking advantage of these guys all on the bottom. Now he goes to the bottom of three and four. Brad Keselowski blocks that move. And then Trevor Bain in that six car hanging in there tight, doing a great job. Ryan Blaney right behind him. I got a feeling he's having a hard time staying there with all these guys behind him, Jeff. All these Contenders for the championship trying to gain these spots and get by Trevor as fast as they can. Look how these guys are going three wide down the back straightaway. Pretty impressed with these tires, though, hanging in as well as they are. I thought these guys would just blow by the old tires, but they're not doing it. It's tough for Truex. Look at him. He's struggling. Logano taking advantage of that low line, gets by the six of Bain, as does Ryan Blaney. Here comes the 78 of Martin Trex Jr. Three wide behind them, Ford position. Chase Elliott, Paul Menard, and the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. Out front, Larson has the lead. McMurray hanging on to second. Remember Clint Boyer's comments to you, Steve, about Jimmy Johnson. Please don't wake him up. <laughs> yeah, he's not the type of guy you want to give any sort of confidence or any sort of momentum. Remember, there are six champions in the playoff field. Five of them have won one championship. Jimmy Johnson, he's won seven. It's not even close when you look at the numbers. But again, we're reminded that the seven-time champion hasn't been to victory lane this entire year. Dave. Rick, you're looking at the 41, that red and black car of Kurt Busch, now back in 13th. What happened? Well, a fuel probe broke on the fueling can after they got the car full of fuel. As the rear tire changer came around the back end, slipped and fell. That cost them time, but the car can make it, let's say, to halfway in this stage. Fight for third between Kozlowski and Kyle Busch. Kozlowski has the spot. Kyle Busch has lost it to that two. That report we just heard from Dave, that could be a major problem, right, Steve? Oh, listen, he talks about the fuel window. I'll go back to what I said a minute ago. I know all of these crew chiefs are thinking fuel, but we talk about gambling. It is Las Vegas. Do something different. How about Cliff Boyer in 12th? Eric Amarola in 15th. The 10 car hasn't showed the speed. I would do something completely unheard of, spice up the field, change it all up. I would pit and probably 40 laps into this final stage. Get brand new tires and force everybody else to make a decision. Come get fresh tires and push the issue, not allow anyone to nurse those tires to halfway. At some point, if you don't have the car enough to attack, you have to work on a strategy that gives your driver that option. 
Steve, that was part of Kurt Busch's questions after this all happened. Hey, do I push it? Are we going to make two stops? Am I going to split this into thirds? Or are we going to make it on one stop? He's, he was told, try to save him. We'll make it on one. We'll go to halfway. Well, I, I like where he's at. That's a, a smart driver. Already thinking there's another option. Got to continue to fight, even when you're put behind. That's what the 88 of Alex Bowman's trying to do as we ride on board with Kyle Busch right here in battle with Ryan Blaney. While this battle is going on, Keselowski continues to march towards the front with his fresher tires. 12 laps fresher tires. Is that a big difference? We're seeing right now Kyle Larson, who came to pit road on lap 150, Brad Keselowski on 162, so fresher tires for Keselowski. Well, there you saw it when we showed the speeds. You know, Keselowski is about three to five miles an hour faster to the center of the corner, and that's tires. That's just new tires are going to be better. I'm surprised, though. I think that as good as these tires have hung on, these older tires have hung on, that opens the door for a late race call to food two tires, or maybe no tires and try to pull something off. Two of Brad Kozlowski restarted seventh. He was the first on four fresh tires. Then Ryan Blaney tried a little bit of pit strategy with a two tire stop and currently holding on to the fifth position. Watch the speed of the two car. Watch how he's able to just roll the middle. Jamie Murray still working that outside. Murray also stayed out under this most recent caution. When you see on the left hand side of your screen the last time the drivers have gotten new tires. Kyle Larson was at lap 150, Keselowski 162, McMurray 150. So a little bit of split pit strategies. The gap now closed to about three car lengths. Maybe just a little over two between the 42 of Larson and the two of Keselowski. Marty. And you know it's interesting, Rick, with Kyle Larson being in the lead here, trying to keep Brad Kozlowski behind him. He told me earlier this week, I haven't had much confidence at all this year. The last two weeks for the way we've run, I have it now. And it's about to be lost for the lead as Brad K goes around him, Rick. Brad Kozlowski on the fresher tires is going to take it away. You're watching Monster Energy Cup Series Racing from Las Vegas, the South Point 400. We go NASCAR nonstop.
Caution has just come out. William Byron, a lot of damage to the right side of that car and the rear. William was running in 22nd position. Take a replay, uh, take a look at the replay here. It's already in the wall. Didn't get to see exactly how that started. But he made hard contact with the right rear quarter. It's going to hurt the side force on that car, and if they can't even get going to finish this race, I think there'll be a handful out there the rest of the day. That looks bad enough. It may. Yeah, that might end his day. They drive right on the trailer. Yeah. But again, they only have a set amount of time to repair this and then get back out onto the track to try to make minimum speed. Rick, this is the 24 Will his teammate Alex Bowman in the 88 had that uncontrolled tire. He's recovered somewhat up to the 15th position, having such a great day, had scored 10 points in the first and second stage uh, in total. But he had that uncontrolled tire the last pit stop. We found a good look at it here. So basically, the pit crew is going to be on the right side, and you're going to see the tire changer leave. And when you stop right there, there you go. That tire changer either has to roll that right, that right front tire or he has to wait for the rear tire carrier to get there. That tire is not within an arm's reach. That's uncontrolled. Can't have those mistakes. Now all the cars coming back on pit road, Dave, with only 84 to go, no mistakes can be afforded. Certainly not for the two group that has done so well last week and this week, picking up Brad Keselowski's spots on pit road. He said last time the car fired off just a little bit too tight. They'll make an air pressure adjustment for that, Parker. How about the run by Jay McMurray? Not in the playoffs, but he doesn't care. Come pits out of third place, four Goodyear tires, and Snoko fueling an air pressure adjustment inside that one car. Just a little bit tight right now, Marty. Revamp pit crew for the playoffs for Kyle Larson. New Jackman Josh Appleby will try to win this race off pit road with the other guys. Said the car starts tight, builds loose. He saw how Half round of wedge going the right rear and the 42 away, but there's other cars that'll beat him off pit road, Rick. Yeah, and it was a close call for the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. He had to check up. They were four wide on pit road and a good race off of pit road. Keslowski and Larson holding on to their spots. Trucks Jr. and Logano grabbing a couple. McMurray loses two. That was a break fight. Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Las Vegas. It's the South Point's 400. And the big story this weekend all across America is the hurricane taking place right now in the Carolinas to help people that have been affected by Hurricane Florence. Visit redcross.org or text Florence to 90999 to donate $10 to American Red Cross Hurricane Florence Relief. And we mentioned how Hurricane Florence 
came aground at Wilmington took a very interesting path there but now it's circling around Charlotte where probably 95 percent of the teams in NASCAR are based right in that area and they are getting a lot of precipitation dumped on them right now and a lot of flooding taking place there. So always thinking about those in the Carolinas right now in that eye of the storm. Back here in Las Vegas. The pits complete and Brad Keselowski Kyle Larson will be one and two for the restart. Keselowski has chosen the outside line once again. Kyle Larson will be on the inside. Martin Truex Jr. Joey Logano making up row two. Then McMurray and Johnson will be in lane three. Well, this is race one of the playoffs. Next week, it will be Richmond. Saturday night racing. The Lancer Energy Cup Series playoffs. We'll hit the short track there in Richmond. That race coverage beginning at 7.30 p.m. Eastern on NBCSN. And then on Friday, just before that race, Dale Jr. will be in that Xfinity race. Looking forward to that. We'll be a in-race reporter. Keselowski chooses the outside line with his teammate behind him. 42 of Kyle Larson is going to use that strategy of staying out of pit stop and go to really gain track position. Let's we'll see what kind of car he has now that he has even tires. Look at Blaney making it three wide and putting Jimmy Johnson on the outside. Outside prevails again, Jeff. Brad Keselowski will take the lead off turn two. Larson clear for second. Jimmy Johnson's still on the outside. That's Jamie McMurray underneath him. I think that's a good thing for Jimmy. Jamie hasn't been on the bottom much today. Back down to the apron for Truex Jr. Trying to get by Logano. It's the first time we've seen Larson up in the top five with even tires since the right front tire issue earlier in the race. So, like I said, his car doesn't have quite the speed on the takeoff on the on stickers, he doesn't have quite the speed. As you see, he's being hounded by the 22 of Legato for second place. He's wanting them long green flag runs so he can move that car up the track. Marty. That's true, Junior. They don't take off very well on the 42, but they're so good at the end of the run. Kind of like Martin Truex Jr. right behind him. But Junior, the one thing that's surprising about the 42, after he kept that right front tire down and that right front tire went, he's not been shy about running that top line. They feel like that's where their speed is. He's staying committed to it. Well, with only 80 to go under the restart, that shouldn't be an issue now, I would imagine, Dale, right? You can run 40 and 40, just split it up in the middle, run right around the top. Really, these drivers now, it's go time. There's no more saving tire, no more conserving. Time to try to go win a race. He's struggling right now. Carver Larson down in one and two, missed the bottom. Car got tight, bounced up the racetrack. He's having a hard time running that bottom groove and keeping pace. He, he's running the groove, but he's hard, having a hard time keeping the pace with these top three. We've seen a few different drivers that have been out front. Let's take a look at today's lap leaders brought to you by Honda Power Sports. Martin Truex Jr. has led the most laps at 79. Brad Keselowski, who's up front right now, will continue to add to his laps led. There's 36 now for Brad Keselowski. Joey Logano at 33. Harvick led 14 before now he's out of the race. And then Kyle Larson was up front for 12 laps. Back here with Kyle Busch. See, he's struggling. He's back in 16th place. He's trying to make this outside work, and he is away against the wall. You see right here, a lot of good cars underneath him, and Kyle just barely touched it off turn four, but he's having some major issues right now, Parker. And Jeff, they actually had a slow stop there. He lost a couple of positions on pit road, and the reason being is the pit crew thought they saw some damage on the front end. They went back to look and maybe repair it and found nothing there to actually fix, Dave. And Parker, his teammate, Denny Hamlin, was also in this picture fighting for position two. It's not been a good day for the 11 team. Denny has reported all day long the car will not turn. They just have not been able to get that tightness out of it. Great battle right here, Jimmy Johnson, with a real competitive car today, taking the fight to Kyle Larson as Kyle Larson continues to struggle to maintain track position. 
Battle for second. Joe Legato has got his hands full with Martrix Jr. Down in turn three. Joey can't hold the bottom, Truex can. That's the difference between those two cars and the speed, the handling. Joey drove that car so far down in the corner. Just couldn't keep his left sides on that white line. He's trying to get away from Martin Truex and just carried a little too much speed. Now can Truex chase down Kozlowski? The gap between the two about a half a second. See the 42 on the other side of the screen just coming off turn two. He's just in front of Jimmy Johnson. You just mentioned in front of Jimmy. He's running the top now. Yeah, you mentioned his struggles in that last lap. I hit you on the shoulder and said, hey, the 42 has come in. It took one lap. It was well, instant. Let's we'll see what kind of lap time he's running up there. The 75, the leaders are the 69, but second fastest, Second though. quickest lap. Yep. Oh, yeah, he's gone from the defense to the offense. He's going to start working on the 12 of Ryan Blaney. It was instant. He was slipping and sliding, not able to get the power down. And once that car came to him in one lap, it was obvious how quick that 42 is with 72 to go. If this race runs green, that's what he needs. He's just not great on the restarts. Well, here you go, Steve. We're going to find out. Speed's at the line. Sue is the fastest. There you go, Kyle Larson, third. Mark Trex Jr. starting to eat away at that lead that Brad Keselowski has after that last lap. The problem Kyle Larson has is everybody knows he's running the top, so the last time he wanted to, Blaney went up there to block him. Yep. As we look back at the lead, you mentioned it, Rick. Brad Keselowski's doing a nice job of just being efficient, trying to take the air off the 78. And the 78, it's, it's like a car length, every corner. It's not dominant, but he's eating away at that lead. Brad to the middle of the racetrack, trying to find some more speed. He sees that car of Martin Truex getting bigger in the mirror. He's starting to move around, trying to find a little bit more. He knows he just needs a tenth. Now coming into some lap traffic. That will play into the different lines that they choose. You see the same thing that I saw earlier with Legato. The two-car Keselowski can't really hold that bottom as we continue around turn three and four where Truex's car works so well and wraps the bottom of the corner completely all the way off of, off of the corner. Incredible how Truex's car works from the center off of the corner. And this is where Brad's just going to have to be real disciplined driving into turn three. Don't overdrive the corner. Keep it on the bottom. He goes to the middle of the racetrack this time. Doesn't even try to get to the bottom. Truex struggling just a little bit with the grip. See his car moving back and forth just a little bit on that bottom groove. We saw Brad, Brad knew he was going to have to do something different. He would have driven into turn three on the bottom. He didn't feel like he could carry enough speed to hold the bottom, so he didn't even try. He just went to the middle of the racetrack, showed Martin something different. That's what I would do. If, I, if a guy's catching me here, he's going to have to pass me on the bottom. I'll give him that inside. And talk about a driver that's hungry. Martin Truex Jr. earlier this week said, Heck yeah, let's go do this. Let's send Barney out on top. Let's give him the best going away gift that we ever could. Talking about the team closing, and he wants to get Barney Visser, team owner, another championship. Now he's going for the lead. Look at the inside of the two. It's going to be hard to make that pass on the inside. You see why a two car, Keselowski has the momentum down the back straightaway, just running just a little bit off the bottom. So right there, the two got a little bit tight just past the entrance. It's going to allow Martin Truex to get a good run off four. Lap traffic right here. What they're going to do? What are they going to do with Landon Castle? It's going to make Truex have to get back in line. Truex knows he has him now, though. He saw the weakness. You see the two car moving around just a little bit. Martin's goal now is to get right to that rear bumper and enter turn three, just right against Keselowski, trying to pull some air off that rear spoiler. Martin Truex Jr. trying to make it three seasons in side a row side, where yeah. he could win the first race of the playoffs. In position there. Brad's going to hold him tight. I think Martin's far enough along now where yep. he can clear him. Brad can't really do anything to him. Can't take any air off of him. Martin got far enough ahead of him where he just took any defense away that Keselowski could have thrown at him. Truex Jr. back out front. You're not going to miss a thing. NASCAR nonstop.
NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa, where the racers stay in Las Vegas. And this week, it wasn't just the racers staying at South Point. They were joined by the Budweiser Clydesdale. Famed Clydesdales are among the many horses who visit South Point's equestrian center every year. But today, they headed to the track for slightly different duties, escorting the anthem singer and grand marshal to their post before the race in true Vegas fashion. Let's get some playoff updates as we do the Applebee's through the field. Marty. And we begin with Martin Truex Jr. 86 laps led. Make that 87 now in the books for him. And he has taken off from Brad Kozlowski since then. Cole Pern told me this morning, he said it was a big week for us at the 78 team. We had two extra day, days to prepare. Everybody back in Charlotte had one day to get ready. We had those two extra days. I don't know if that's why we're fast, but it certainly didn't hurt, Dave. Now that Kozlowski has lost the lead, the word to him, don't overdrive it. We are second best. His car is just faster. Don't try to make up for it. Kelly? Joey Logano led 33 laps early in this one, running third. Now his crew chief, Todd Gordon, told me that he thinks this is the best playoff field they've ever faced. So he said it's imperative to have two really good races to start this thing. You can't just count on a base hit to get to the third of the next round. Top three right now, Marty. Kelly, a moment ago, we saw Kyle Larson struggling to stay in the sixth position. He has since taken off. Now he's in fourth. So what's going on early in these runs? Take a listen. 10-4, man, just hang in there. They're trying to get it better. We still got 70-something laps to get it done here. We just need to think big picture. I'm not stressed now. All right, well, sounds like it. You're complaining big time there. <laughs> they were joking that he was stressed out. He said, I think the car's on the splitter in this first 10 laps. we got to get that figured out by the next stop, Kelly. Well, it was a big unknown just how fast this nine team would be on another mile and a half track. Ellen Gustis and the crew chief told me they're trying some new things in this car, and if they hit on it, they thought it would be really fast. He has been today. They've had to recover from one slow pit stop, but Chase Elliott back up, running six. Big hit by caution. Jamie McMurray into the wall he goes, catches the nine of Chase Elliott. McMurray sliding up the track, now back down there. into the traffic. Oh, you got. But McMurray and the back end of that car gone. Window net is down. And look at the damage to Chase Elliott. Wow. Looked Allen like, for fifth position. Yeah. Looked like the one turned around, like the left rear tire. Yeah. Yeah, down. the spin was so fast. It looked like he had an issue. And we just talked about it, how these – Playoff guys that we thought were in great shape coming into this race. An issue like this, and now you have a lot of ground to make up. Running well. Parker. Well, guys, Jamie McMurray came on the radio just a couple laps before that and said he had gotten into the wall. He asked the team if they saw any smoke. They said no, but that might have been the culprit there, maybe of cutting a tire down. It would make sense, Parker. Dale, you and I are watching that battle between the 22, the 42, the 9, the 1. They were all kind of in that mix together. And I mean, the one snapped around on entry into turn three. And Rick, you said a hard impact. That is the longest slide we've seen in a long time. Up the wall, back straight into it. As you see on the left side, the nine continues to drop. Minus two, that'll only get worse as he continues to lose positions. That's McMurray walking back to the ambulance. He'll head to the infield care center. Here's the contact with the wall that Jamie was worried about. Pretty significant contact right there. Wow, man, that's a big hit. So, may, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the cut the right rear tire. It's got a big tire rub now. And you see it's some wisps of smoke out of the right rear. Now, right here, look at this, to the bottom, and watch how quick this car turns around and up the racetrack. Chase Elliott just absolutely nowhere to go. I. Somebody sitting at home saying, why didn't he just turn left? Well, the cars don't turn that quickly. You cannot get it slowed down and turn left quick enough to avoid that. You can see how quick the one goes around from this shot. And there's Chase. He's, he knows it's coming. There's just absolutely nothing he can do. Yeah, just like Eric Jones earlier today, the speed of these cars in the corner and the grip that this track or the lack of the grip this track has, there's nothing you can do. And the more you try to slow down with the brakes, the less it'll turn. It's, yep. just, it's just sometimes there's nothing you can do, and that was the case with Chase Elliott. They 
We have seen some big impacts all week, and the Xfinity race had some hard wrecks, and this hit by the one is a huge wreck. One of the things I want to say about that is, is the safety that NASCAR has to keep these cars from catching on fire. I mean, that was a very direct hit to the fuel cell, the back of that car, and no fire. And uh, so the safety that they build into these cars Not only in the cockpit of the car, but also in other parts of the compartments. It's very critical. And behind these guys, it was a really close call. Watch right here as you're out the right along with Bush. He Go sees the, the cautious one hearing it. Fluid, mid. Mm. Look at that with Ryan Newman. Ryan was just slowing down, down quicker, and that was a right. close call for another one of our playoff contenders. You talk about safety. I think we lose side of the fact because these drivers are so good and control their cars so well that they're going upwards of 200 miles an hour when they enter a turn and that's an incredible speed and then when something like this happens it happens so quickly it, it does happen quickly and we talked about the playoffs that's the eighth playoff driver to have an incident today eighth in the first round of the playoffs this we said it in the open this could be the most important race in the entire playoffs we we have a we have a three quarter mile coming next week. Then we have the road course in Charlotte that everyone said it's going to be chaos, and here we are with so many incidents in round one. This is not what these guys wanted. They will clean up the racetrack and take the nine and the one back into the garage. Both involved in this incident, bringing out the seventh caution here at Vegas. Cleanup taking place as we continue with Monster Energy Cup Series racing from Las Vegas. The South Point 400, 51 laps to go. And there have been plenty of issues to start off this playoff. Round of 16. It all started actually before the race started with Austin Dillon not able to get through tech inspections and so he had to go to the back. Early in the race, Kyle Larson Really the first guy we saw with the tire problem. Caught it, did a good job. The tire didn't explode. 
didn't damage his car too badly. They came in, the damage they had, they got it fixed. Here you go, Ryan Blaney and Al Eric Almirola had some contact earlier in the race. Put Blaney in the fence, and he's been working on that car all, the, all day long trying to get it back to competitiveness. Yeah, and then the 18 of Kyle Busch only got three lug nuts on the left front, had to make an extra pit stop. You see, trying to recover. The big four. issue yep. with Kevin Harvick getting into the wall after he blew a tire, then the 20, nowhere to go for Eric Jones. So two of the playoff drivers out of the race. And in this latest incident with Jamie McMurray, hard contact in turn two. Ended up getting the right rear tire on the tire, on the on the tire, the fender, cut it, spun out right in front of Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott nowhere to go in in his day. With everything we've seen today, we got short track Saturday night action next week, then a road course. This round's about survival, Steve. Absolutely. And right now, it's going to be about the pit stops and pit crews. Who can perform? Who can get some track position for their driver with 50 to go, Dave? Two crew has been on all day, Steve. Can they do it here? It won't involve any adjustments for the race car because Brad and crew chief Paul Wolf reason, let's leave it where it is. I can adjust it with the track bar inside, Kelly. Joey Logano's also been working the track bar. He says he needs more front turn on a short run, but more rear grip on the long run, especially as he moves up the racetrack. Four Goodyear tires and air pressure adjustment. Snoko fuel, Marty. Kelly, it's like clockwork for the 78 car. He comes in as the dominant car, leading 96 laps so far today. Takes about 10 to 15 laps for that car to come in. Once it does, he is the best car from then on. Looks like a little bit of a long stop for the 78. Let's see if they can hang on to the lead here, Rick. Race off of pit road. And Kozlowski grabs a spot. Logano as well. Martin Truex Jr. drops two. Kyle Larson stays right there in fourth. Look at this race off of pit road, how close it was for that second spot. The Jimmy Jensky cars have been on fire on pit road today. Jimmy Johnson lo loses a few spots there when it matters the most. Parker. Well, guys, you see the 18 Kyle Busch is still on pit road. They went to work on that right front fender. He actually got that damage leaving pit road the last time we were on here, running into the back of the 12 car of Ryan Blaney. It caved in the right front. He's been tight ever since. So they've had to go to work on that, Marty. And Parker, Jamie McMurray from the Infield Care Center. And boy, that was a hard hit, number one. You had such a fast car today. When you made contact with the wall, did you know the right rear was rubbing? No, there was no smoke inside the car, and, and the spotter said that he couldn't see any smoke. So, you know, typically it'll, it'll run a while, but, uh, yeah, I'm assuming that the right rear tire must uh, have, have rubbed a hole in it, and then I don't know why I chose to run the bottom on that lap. I wish I'd stayed against the wall, but, it, uh, you know, sometimes those look big, and that, that actually didn't hurt that bad. Um, big day for, for Gear Inch, though. They actually gave away a new Camaro to... Uh, to uh, a customer, and um, we've had a, had a great weekend, had a good car, had a good car last three weeks, so, um, so that's, that's unfortunate. He mentions the speed they had. They certainly were a factor today here at Vegas. Yeah, he had been running right up against the wall pretty much uh, from the drop of the green flag on all the restarts, utilizing that high line to make the passes and, and had a great race going. I mean, Jamie McMurray was running better than Kyle Larson most of the race, his teammate at Chip Ganassi Racing. Yeah, when you don't make the playoffs, uh, you're one of those teams that wants to spoil the party for everybody else. You want to try to get a win or do something to end the season on a high note. You're disappointed you're not in the playoffs. It's kind of like not getting invited to the party. <laughs> and uh, you kind of want to have a, you know, a win or something to hang your hat on before the season's over with. Hey, hey Junior, something else that's happened with all these cautions and incidences that we've seen today and this could have an impact if you have a late race problem. We now have 26 cars in the lead lap. So if you have a problem late in the race, you could have a terrible finish. You know, a lot of these mile and a half, we'll see maybe 16, 17, 18 cars in the lead lap, but because of the cautions and people taking wave arounds and all those kind of things, there are a lot of cars still in the lead lap with only 48 laps to go. And that could make a late race problem even bigger than it would have normally been. Racing will continue after this Monster Energy Cup Series race is complete. Getting ready for the Verizon IndyCar Series finale. Scott Dixon coming in with a 19 point advantage over Alexander Rossi. And those two, they know all too well it is a double points race at Sonoma. That is coming up right after this race here in Las Vegas. And a champion will be crowned. Will Scott Dixon be able to claim that fifth 
championship. For more updates on what's happening here, let's go down to Dave. Well, Rick, funny you should promote the IndyCar race right there because when I talked to Paul Wolf this morning about the possibility of Brad Keselowski winning Team Penske's 500th race across all major motorsports, he said, hey, aren't they racing in Sonoma? He was referring to the Team Penske teammates that could win out there and maybe the fact that the two car wasn't as fast as they should be. But then he thought about it and he said, eh, never mind, I think we could do it. We won the 400th race for Team Penske and we're going for the 500th today. Kelly? Well, Crew Chief Mike Bugaravich told me that the key for this 14 team and Clint Boyer to advance from this round was simply not make any mistakes. Well, they've been relatively mistake free, although Bugga just told Clint, hey, I know we don't have the best car on track right now, but other playoff contenders have had issues and we're looking pretty good. Hang in there right now. He will restart sixth, Parker. What did Clint Boyer say? Don't awake the sleeping giant that is the 48 team, the seven time champs over here. They just lost four spots on pit road, which might be potentially the last stop. But Chad Knauss came across radio just before this caution and said, you're faster than everyone but the 78. Leave it to these guys to see if they can pull it off, Marty. About to go back to green. Chase Elliott has come from the infield care center, and uh, I know there was nowhere to go for you. I also heard you say on the radio afterwards, my shoulder, my shoulder, and I see you kind of holding your left shoulder a little gingerly. What happened with that? Yeah, I guess just uh, got caught in the wheel, but it popped really big, and then I kind of got stopped and got messing with it, and it popped really big again. So um, all good now, and we'll uh, yeah try to rebound next week. Had a really, really good car today, and, and uh, yeah, almost, just barely. Um, yeah, barely clipped him. So just hate it, man. We, uh, I mean, so many guys fell out today. I mean, I feel like half the top 16 has crashed. So just got to finish, I guess. Here we go for Chase Elliott. Almost missed that wreck, but again, concerned about that left shoulder. He is holding it very gingerly, guys. It's always concerning when you hear that. You have to get it checked out. And he's right. It has been issue filled for playoff drivers. And here we are with 46 to go. The top nine, top eight, excuse me, are all playoff guys. How about Eric Amarola, guys? Hasn't had a great day, hasn't had a bad day. He's just trying to stay off all of the highlights, right? If he could just somehow work his way into the top five, six, seven, eight, it has to be a successful day. I know they want to have a faster car, Junior, but they can't really fix that now. Now it's about survival, just solid points day. Yes, attrition is definitely coming into play now. As we look at the Ram trucks proven to last, can someone gamble? Well, we're about to find out. How about avoid tire issues? That has been a big storyline. And take advantage of other drivers' mishaps. You don't want to be one having the mistake. You want to be the one that can capitalize on those mistakes. Keslowski, Logano, teammates side by side. Green flag back in the air. Well, Logano with a great restart, being pushed by Truex. We'll take the lead. That's the first time the bottom has prevailed on the restart, Jeff. Off turn two. It all happened with the launch. Just a great job leaving in the restart zone. These two now are fighting for that 500th win for Team Penske. Out in front, 44 laps to go in Vegas. Logano, Keselowski, Truex Jr., Blaney and Larson, the top five. Keselowski's hounding that 22. Logano having a hard time keeping that car on the bottom, but has enough speed down the back straightaway to keep a couple car lengths of the lead. He doesn't want the two to get too close to be able to disturb the air on the back of that car. Brad to the middle of the corner, trying to get a run on the high side. Yeah, all day long, Joey Logano just has not really held the bottom of the racetrack. I've started to under believe that he's not even trying to. I think he tries to enter the corner on the bottom, and then he just throttles up pretty quickly. Now he went to the middle. I don't think he's really working on running the very bottom. Hey, he saw Brad run the middle in the last corner, so he's going to run the middle. Told you, Joey's one of those guys that moves wherever you are. He's trying to disturb the air on the two car, and make it difficult for Brad. Create dirty air wherever Brad goes. See right here, he's on the line. Now he's off. He he doesn't even try to carry that line past halfway through around the corner. Logano going good doing a good job of disrupting the air on the two and not allowing Keselowski to close in the gap about three tenths of a second and then another three tenths of a second back to Martin Truex Jr. I'm really surprised by Logano being able to stretch out this lead on Keselowski. Keselowski has been dominant or leading this field for the most part over the last several runs and over the last lap and a half has lost quite a bit of speed or 
quite a bit of time to the 22. Back and forth, about another second back is the 42 of Kyle Larson as well. Not moving forward doesn't sound good. The 42 has lost spots on every restart, so just maintaining may work as he now moves to the top of the racetrack. We'll see, has it come in yet for the 42? It doesn't look like it as the 12 closes in. Maybe a little too early for the top yet. We mentioned earlier with the Ram trucks proven to last, the tires and trying to avoid tire issues. So I'll ask crew, tree, crew chief and drivers, could these guys be thinking about that? Maybe saving, could Kozlowski be saving a little bit for later in the run? I just don't think you can save. I know that it has to be a concern, but for the race win, the automatic advance to the next round, I think you have to take those gambles. Maybe back in the middle of the top 10, you could be a little bit more conservative, but if you're any of these cars right here that thinks they can win the race, they have to go, go hard right away. See Larson back to the bottom. He's tried that top. His top's just not there yet. The speed's just not there. Back to the bottom of the racetrack. But yeah, he's maintaining here. He just can't lose spots. He's make the actual time back up, but can't lose spots. There he goes back to the top. He's he's two seconds back. He lost about two or three tenths to the leaders right there. Back to the top. But that looked good. That's the best the top has looked. He's got to pull away from the 12 down the back stretch by at least a couple car lengths. Let's see what he does down here. Running in the middle of the track. Marty, what you got? He's a lot like the 78 car, Martin Truex Jr. You can almost count on it, Jr. We're six laps into this run. It takes 10 laps to get going. And Larson has told Chad Johnson a couple times, I think it's on the splitter. We've got to get that better. So if they get another stop, which they may not with only 38 to go, he would like to get the early part of this run better. Man, that was a close call there in the middle of one and two. Brad Keselowski chopped the nose of the 78. Joey Logano's best friend right now is Brad Keselowski because the 78 comes on and he wants this battle to last as many laps as possible and try to get a lead because he knows the 78 is coming. Back to the apron for the 78. Trex Jr. trying to take that second spot away. He's been right on the bottom of the racetrack almost all day. It's going to be so hard to make that pass where Brad's running. Brad's running low enough to, to make it almost impossible for the 78 to get up beside him. And that, that running that one groove up is giving Brad a little bit more straightaway speed. But Marty said it, you'll about lap 10 for the 78 car also. That's when it takes off, and that's about where we are. And Martin Truex Jr., I think he's going to continue to put pressure on, and I think he's going to get better as this run goes on, Marty. And I think everybody in the field knows Martin Truex Jr. is a car to beat today. In fact, Chad Johnson told Kyle Larson a moment ago, our best hope right now, if that two keeps holding up that 78, their cars come in at the same time. But if the 78 starts checking out, because we've seen it, once he gets to the lead, and if he gets around this two and 22, he's gone. What the 78 wants to do is be right on that quarter panel, on corner exit, just like this right here, side by side down the front straightaway, side draft. He's going to move down onto the apron. This is where he's going to get him, down in turn one and two. He's going to be clear. Clear of the two car. Now he's going to try to focus on caution. caution. Kyle Busch into the grass. He's coming here. Kyle Busch into the grass. Looks as though he's, he's going to try to continue, but out. another problem for the playoff contenders. Right front's coming apart. Don't this is crazy. Off. Leaders in right. four. It's amazing how many of the playoff contenders have had problems. And look at the top two. Kevin Harvick out of this race. Kyle Busch both coming in with 2,050 points. We thought we're well ahead of everyone else, but now both having issues. Kyle's got a right front tire issue. He's trying to maintain slow here, speed so he doesn't do more to damage to the down. car. We're going to take a look at the replay here in turn three and four. He gets a little crossed up. Running that high line. It's a little dirty up there from the wreck we just had with the nine car and the one car, and you see he just gets loose in the speedy drive. What he's really fortunate of is through right. this grass, not ripping the front splitter off the car. Very, very lucky, because that would have ended his day right there. I thought it was game over when he was aimed for the infield. We saw Mike Lynette in the Xfinity race tear the entire nose off. Listen, listen for the right front blow. Lock it down, lock it down, lock it down, lock it down. He's locking right it down. there, that was when the right front blew. He's downshifting to third gear. He's coming here. Still in the throttle. Trying to keep that car off the wall. We saw uh, Truex do that in Michigan when him and William Byron got together in one and two. 
All right, guys, we just mentioned, Rick, what'd you say? Who will gamble? We're in Las Vegas. Only 11 laps on the tires. The leaders are rolling around. The pits are open. Who will come? Two tires, four tires. Will anyone dare stay on the racetrack with 34 laps to go? Yeah, it'll be 33 when they come around. This next time, they're going to continue the cleanup. But on to pit road, they go. Logano leading the lead lap cars to the attention of the crews. Dave. Yep, no way they could turn down that set of fresh tires. It is, by the way, the final one for most everybody on pit road. Can the two team do it one more time? They'll take four in fuel, Kelly. Well, the 22 a team of Joy Logano has also been really solid on pit road today. He said he was just freeing up towards the end of that last run. It looks like it's going to be four tires and fuel, Marty. Cole Pern told Martin Truex Jr. do whatever Joey Logano does, so they came down pit road. The 78 team has struggled on pit road. It's not really been the pit crew. Martin has had trouble getting out of his box. Let's see if they can deliver on what might be the final stop of the day. It's going to be tight with that two-car rig. Race off pit road, Brad Kozlowski. Gains two spots, Martin Trex Jr. stays in second, Logano loses two. The story all season long, the big three, Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch dominating. Well now, those two struggling, and Martin Trex Jr. capitalizing, could get to victory lane again. Lee Diffie with you here at Sonoma Raceway, where it is Championship Day in the Verizon IndyCar Series. Scott Dixon, the four-time champ, up against the young charger, Alexander Rossi. Who will get the title? You'll see it right after the cup race is finished. And it might be Championship Day for the Verizon IndyCar Series, but a lot of people's championship hopes going out the window today at Las Vegas. And others feeling the excitement of what is taking place here. Brad Kozlowski's crew, that's what it means to win the race off of Pitt Road. This team has every right to feel fired up. That's the fifth time today they've won the race off Pitt Road. They have stepped up to the plate. 
Well, they won Darlington with a late race pit stop. Hours in the gym, hours practicing. You finally get that chance, that moment to make a difference. They did it at Darlington. They've been solid all day today. It's a team sport. And right now, Brad Keselowski's team is hitting on all cylinders as he is now the lead car coming off of turn four. He was once again chosen the outside line. Keselowski Truex making up row one. Will Logano push the 78. Accelerators down. They fan out once again behind the top two. Kyle Larson, Kyle Larson pushing the, the, two. the two. He's trying to get on that quarter panel. He's Three there. wide for the lead. Here comes Larson on the high side. What a move. Larson, they make contact down the back stretch. Going to be three wide, getting into three. Here comes the 78 again. Martin Trex Jr. trying to take advantage of the low line. Kyle Larson's going to hang on to the lead as they come out onto the front stretch. What a restart for Kyle Larson. But battling back is Martin Trex Jr. in the 78. And here comes the two of Keselowski. Keselowski trying to clear the 78 before they get into three. Marty. Remember the early run issues for Kyle Larson all day long. He asked the team to be bold in the air pressure adjustments to get the splitter off the ground. I guess it worked. He's in the lead, Rick. And here comes Logano all the way down to the apron. He passes the 78. Will the 78 dive back to the bottom of the track to get that position back? That's a big change right there for Martin Truex Jr. Now he's all the way back and forth with only 28 to go. Can he even get back to the front? A lot of pressure for the lead. Saw a little bit of a tire smoke on the left rear quarter panel at 42 car with the contact he had with Keselowski. Got a small rub there coming off turn two. Here comes Brad Keselowski on the inside once again. Does he get to the quarter panel? They're side by side, racing for the lead. Keselowski the advantage when they went across the stripe. Now, Kim Larson utilize that high line, get the momentum going once again and get back by. You still see that tire rub on the left rear. What a run he had around the top of one and two. Incredible run. Talk about coming to life in the playoffs and having to perform. Kyle Larson hasn't won in 2018. He's had five runner-up finishes. Now trying to close the deal here at Vegas. What's he going to do right now in turn one? Is he going to go to the top again? He does go to the top, opens the door for Keselowski on Look the bottom. Look at that left rear tire rub. Still working, that makes me nervous. Nothing he can do about it now, though. He's just got to go. Seems to only happen in one and two. A ton of load up there as he runs that high line. He's really loading that car, getting a lot of travel that left rear. But he's holding Brad Keselowski off doing that. That's what he has to do if he wants to win this race. He cannot let the two car by. The two car, to me, looks a little bit better on speed. He gives him that clean air and that lead. It's over. And once again, diving to the bottom of the racetrack, Keselowski trying to use a shorter distance around the track to get the advantage. Brad's got to know that the longer they go, the better the odds are that the 42 is going to get higher and higher and higher and on the long run be the better car. So Brad needs to get that lead as soon as he can. Not able to get to the quarter panel there as it came out of four. Don't count that 78 yet. Remember, out yet. Remember, it takes him about 10 laps to get going. He's got a long way to go. He got to go through a lot of people, but I would not give up on him. Tire rub seems to be getting a little bit better on the 42. And he was all the way, almost against the wall that time through one and two. And the, the concern is, did it wear the tire away or did it rub the fender away? Clearance in that tire. Looks like to me, Larson just keeps moving higher and higher up the racetrack, and here comes Truex on the bottom. Mark Truex Jr. trying to take third away from Logano. Kyle Larson had dominated at Darlington. And then, after a late race, caution came out, and the two of Brad Keselowski was able to win the race off of Pitt Road. Larson loses Darlington. This is an interesting move here. Brad Keselowski ran the middle of the racetrack. It actually kept, helped him, though, didn't it? Did. It did. He kept pace. Now yep. he learned a little bit something. Let's see what he does getting into one. You see Truex getting by Logano. There he goes. Brad in the middle of the racetrack again. Back to the bottom on corner exit, though. If Brad gets on that quarter panel, he can side draft the 42 down the back straightaway or down the front straightaway. 
put him in position to make the pass for the next corner. There you go, he first, went back to the middle. In that's the first time four. for the 42 in the top of three and four. Stayed very high through three and four, and he'll keep his one to two car length advantage over the two. Caution oh, got, coming out, Denny Hamlin in the grass. Now he's coming off of turn four. And he does have playoff contender. He does have severe damage to that splitter. And he stops right in his pit stall. That car is destroyed. Another playoff contender, and yes, the front end of that car destroyed. You see Denny Hamlin takes the steering wheel off. He's going to climb out of the car. He knows his day's done. He struggled all day long with this car. All the Gibbs guys have been struggling today, and they all found trouble one way or another. That's so much damage that obviously the day's over for these guys. Denny very frustrated. Take a, oh, we have a, take a look at the replay here from the helmet cam. Yeah, this will be crazy. Entering turn three at the top. A lot like what we saw his teammate. Just came around on the corner exit. Right, hang on to it. right there in the grass. I'm really interested to see. Watch this nose when the splitter digs in right there. Oh, just yeah. destroys it. You know, a major advancement, I think, potentially coming to the sport at Charlotte Motor Speedway. They changed that. It's no more grass. Now it's an artificial material where the cars will hopefully slide over it. I surely hope that works. I think it will. That's going to be a major change to keep these cars from getting damaged like this. They put in turf at Charlotte Motor Speedway. We will see that in two weeks for the road course race there as and Denny Hamlin will make the walk. He has to go back to the infield care center. I mean, this is they've raced all year long to be in this position, and we're seeing all these playoff guys. Nine already. It's crazy. Who would have thought nine? Pit road's open. Nobody really has any tires, though, do they, Steve? The six of Trevor Bain is the report I have. He has somehow saved a set of brand new tires. He'll come in, put them on. The problem is so many cars stayed out. I'm not sure if he can use them with 20 to go. We'll come back for the restart. Larson Keselowski, the front row at Vegas.
Well, coming up next on NBCSN, it's the Verizon IndyCar Series Championship from Sonoma. We will get you there right after Victory Lane from here at Las Vegas for all other interviews and content from here at Las Vegas. Make sure to tune in to NBCSports.com. So this last restart coming, Rick, I'm going to be watching who's going to spin the tires. This is the first restart on old tires. No one knows how these rear tires are going to grip because every single time, with the exception of this one, they've had new tires on. Now they have hot scuffs. Larson didn't want that caution. He was about to flip the switch and take off, but it's allowed this two-car to cool his tires, and here they go for the final restart. 17 laps remain. A good restart. For Kyle Larson, he dives all the way to the bottom of the track, trying to affect the two. Keslowski took it. Keslowski wants to check out now after a great restart. Here comes the 78 of Truex Jr. Three wide per second. Lagana right in the middle of the track. He's going to have second for now. The momentum on the 42 on the high side. Can he use it? Blocking by the 22 of Logano, trying to slow down Martin Truex Jr. as they go into one. Brad Keselowski again, out front. Could he win his third race in a row? Oh, we got another wreck on the back stretch. A car has spun inside wall, heavy contact, Rick. Caution has come out once again, and it's the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Now, Steve, we heard earlier as the window net's coming down for the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr., we heard earlier teams mentioning they had four lap scuffs. Are they better than what's on now? And who makes that call to come down to pit road if you're running in the top 10? Well, I think if you were going to pit, you would have had to do it on the pit star or the caution before. That was such a short run. I think all these guys, all the leaders, they're going to stay on the racetrack. We see Ricky Stenhouse climb out of his automobile. It kind of stacked up. Paul Menard's on new tires here, the 47. I don't know if the 17 just got loose. I can't tell if there was contact the first time, definitely the second time. Yeah, it just looked like the 17 got, got loose on the nose of that car. Oh, Almendinger, I don't think, really got into him. Yeah, Almendinger didn't get into him to start it by any means. Big impact, though. Yeah. When I was watching it live, because that bright yellow 21 there at the bottom that just misses the accident. Rick, you mentioned new tires. He did put sticker tires on. Ricky Stenhouse hit so close to that opening again. Yeah, Chase Briscoe yesterday in the Xfinity race hit in the exact same spot. Leaders are coming around turn three and four. We'll see if. Man, it'll be hard to pit, but maybe if you're in the back half of the top 10, you think it's a better option. We'll see. Does anybody change strategies now? Kind of a broken field. Most are going to stay out. This presents another restart. I thought we was going to see a run to the green. And now we got Penske teammates up front. They won't be able to help each other or work together. Larson definitely wants another shot at it. That restart did not go as he had hoped. He's in the worst spot, though, of, yeah. of the places he would want to be. I mean, he's, he's in third and on that inside line. He'd want to be on that outside. That's how he got the lead in the first place, restart fourth. Well, let's go back and watch that last restart because they're all going to use that last restart to try to make themselves better for this one. So look what the two of Keselowski does. Larson had a great start, just wasn't quite good enough. Keselowski just took the shorter way around the racetrack, got a good launch, and just shortened up the front straightaway, really, and that just put him in front of Larson. So a very good start by, by Keselowski. I think it's only going to get tougher, though. Again, more laps on tires. It's going to be harder to get a launch without spinning the rear tires. Now yeah, on that restart, Brad Keselowski knew that he was beating that 42 car in acceleration, and he pulled down there on the apron to get away from the side draft to not allow that 42 to get on that quarter panel and slow him down. Marty. And also look who was behind the 42 on that restart, the 22 of Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski's teammate. And Kyle Larson said, I was waiting for that push. That push never came. So let's talk about it with Chad Johnson, his crew chief. And Chad, I'm assuming these cautions, you probably didn't want to see, did you, with such a good long run car? No, we definitely uh, struggle getting going the first few laps. Car's just way too tight. I don't know if we're on the splitter or what. So we'd definitely like to see it go green, uh, especially since we just put our last set of stickers on it. But at least we're all in the same boat. We kind of got a, a set behind early with the right front that went down. But 
ended up being able to stay out, take the weight around, and get on even, even tires with everybody. So should be interesting here. Um, he's one of the best in the game at restarts, so we'll just see if we can't get the push when we need to push and see if we can make it stick. Kyle Larson going to get another shot at it, Parker. Right, Marty, here with Denny Hamley, just got out of the infield care center. Denny, we saw your teammate Kyle Busch spin off four. You spun off four. What's going on over there? Uh, trying to get more than the car is capable of going. Uh, you know, should have just finished 15th or 10th or wherever we were at the time, but uh, trying to get more, uh, car won't handle it. it uh, no grip, and uh, just, uh, just a bad day overall. Just a bad day here for Nanny Ham on this 11 team, Kelly. All right, what well, was a great restart for Joey Logano and that 22 team, and now this time Todd Gordon, he'll be starting from the front row. It's going to be a short shootout potentially to the checkered flag. What do you want to see out of Joey? Yeah, just good, good clean shifts here and uh, doing what he does. He's, uh, he's pretty good. You put him on the front row, obviously. Uh, racing our teammate there. Good position to be, but uh, you know, just proud of the whole team and where they've gotten us to. And and we've we've slugged all day. We haven't had the fastest car, but we've had speed at times. And a uh, short run's not been a bad thing. All right, and they value clean air over those four lap scuffs, Dave. And now Brad Keselowski gets to drag race with his teammate on this restart. What's the two car got? Well, uh, had a good day. You know, I'm real proud of these guys on pit road. We've uh, gained a lot of spots today. Um, numerous times and gotten us a lead and that's key to getting that clean air. Our car's been solid, uh, not quite the speed that the 78 has, but I feel like we're second best right now. And uh, with a short run here at the end, I think if we can get the lead here and get that clean air, uh, I think we got a shot at it. So uh, like I said, it's been a fun day. We were able to win a stage. And um, then from there, it's just been nice and steady with this auto trader forward and, and um, trying to score some points here to finish it out. Clean air is worth so much guys and they have earned it today. Paul Wolf seemed all calm and cool there. And you look at another guy who's maybe maybe not so calm and cool. A couple four-time champions there. You saw Dario Franchitti taking a picture with Scott Dixon. Scott Dixon looking for his fifth IndyCar title. That's coming up right after victory lane here in Las Vegas. And that means that's coming up in about 10 laps. And they are ready, ready to go. Scott Dixon, all smiles. It'll be hard, though. He only has a 19-point lead over Alexander Rossi, and it's double points for this final race at Sonoma. It's all Chip Ganassi standing there in the background. I have to wonder if he's keeping a close tabs on this race. It's a 29-point lead. I'd mentioned 19. It's a 29-point lead for Scott Dixon that he has over Alexander Rossi, and again, Double points for them at Verizon. We look at the points now as they run here for this, the first race of the playoffs, and nine playoff drivers have already been involved in an incident today. How about Jimmy Johnson? Up to 10th after he was back down in the 17th position, excuse me, the 15th position of the 16 drivers. Look at those bonus points for Brad Keselowski, man. He's got 25 bonus points. Counting more if he gets this race win. Well, and more importantly, you talked about how crazy the next two races could be a win here. He don't have to worry about him. He'll be into the round, second round. We've seen this before. Teammates side by side. Keselowski on the inside. Logano on the outside. Then Larson and Truex Jr. making up row two. Logano spun his tires on the outside lane. That's going to help Larson. Larson. Trying to take over second. He moves ahead of the 22. Keslowski out front. Larson running second. Here comes Ryan Blaney in the 12. And on the outside, Mark Trex Jr. with momentum. Contact. Now all the way down to the bottom of the track. He's trying to take second away from Blaney. Behind these guys, they're three wide. Trouble, got trouble. Jimmy Johnson's the in the fence. There's smoke coming out of the left front. Jimmy Johnson's got a right front tire issue. Contact between the 12 and the 78 on the apron. Clint Boyer has Clint, a problem too. Clint Boyer's Clint hit Boyer. the wall. Yeah. See all the damage to the 48. More playoff contenders with problems. Now 11 different playoff contenders have been involved in accidents. Alex Bowman's going to have a problem too. I think he has a tire down as well. He does. He has a left front tire down. Three more playoff contenders in one lap. Nine hurry laps up, to up, go. Coming to you, coming to you guys. He's going to try to get to pit road. He will. That's Alex Bowman on the right side of your side. screen. Racing continuing and Keslowski checking out a second lead over Blaney.
Attrition, definitely the story today for the playoff contenders. Logano with a big run. He's going to go by the 42. Look at this, three wide, four wide. Alex Bowman up against the wall, you can see there. Oh man, that's big contact with a 41 car. And you have to wonder if the 41 hadn't shown a problem yet, but he may have one coming here. Jimmy Johnson in the side of Clint Boyer. And Logano almost into the wall as he came out of turn two. Now Logano slowing down because he has a 78 coming up on the inside. And Kyle Larson's jumped up to that very top. There's too much going on, Rick. I can't keep up with it. <laughs> uh, think if you were a spotter or one of the drivers out there right now. Here comes Larson again. Tucked in behind the 22. He's going to run that high line. The 41 of Kurt Busch is off the pace, but still out on the racetrack. 12th position. What a oh. battle down the back straightaway. Contact made. The 22 of Logano trying to hold off that 42 of Larson. Larson all the way up against the wall again. And now he tries to get by the 78 of Martin Trex Jr. And the caution's out, guys. We have another yellow. Oh, must it's be going to be a sprint to the finish. Must be some debris on the track from all those issues. issues How could there be debris? There was only yeah. five cars with flat tires. <laughs> like My old, goodness. Talking about debris in turn two. It's all coming out of turn two, the 22 sliding up the racetrack. He gets into the wall. Wow, that's another big contact. Now he has to be nervous. Remember what happened to Jamie McMurray early in the race. He got into the wall similar to that and he ended up blowing a tire. Certainly you can see this is a tires have been been rubbing on for sure. Kelly. Joey Logano saying he doesn't feel or hear anything as a result of hitting that wall in that 22 car. The team just saying they think they're all good. Yeah, it's a great break, for two for Kurt Busch. But a big contact on the back straightaway with Alex Bowman. He's able to get this caution, probably come down pit road and take a look at that car because he was going backwards there. Clint Boyer, Bowman, Johnson, Jimmy Johnson, they're all two laps down. They'll probably be on pit road as well to make repairs. All the talk about the big three. So much speed all year out of Stuart Haas racing. So much speed out of Joe Gibbs Racing, and here we have Penske. One, two, three in the first race of the playoffs. NASCAR has called this a quickie yellow. If you're on the lead lap or not on the lead lap, you can come to pit road when pit road is open. And when they come back by, it'll be just four laps of racing to go. You mentioned Penske. The only car so far this year that hasn't won from the Penske stable is that 12 car, Blaney, wonder how aggressive he's going to be here. All day long, the car's you know been restarting at the top of the racetrack, but Brad Kozlowski's changed the script up a little bit, restarting on the bottom. And as soon as they made a comment in the driver's meeting to tell the drivers they can't change lanes before the start finish line, the leader cannot go down on the apron. Brad's waiting till beyond the start finish line to get down on that apron, get away from the side draft of the outside line. Dave. Junior, you see the 88 on pit road, a little more damage repair there, and they'll get Alex back off as well. The 41 of Kurt Busch came down pit road as well. They'll get a change of tires and a little bit of damage control there on the 41, Parker. Right, Dave, and his teammate Jimmy Johnson here also fixing some of that damage, trying to pull the fenders out on the right side. They went two laps down when they had to pit under green. Took away a great run from these guys. Kelly? 14 of Clint Boyer's also been on pit road. He's been down pit road, in fact, a couple of times since he had pretty heavy contact. You can see the damage there on the right side as they try to hammer out uh, that right front fender, and they'll get him some uh, not sticker Goodyear tires, uh, but some fully inflated ones anyway. Probably those four lap tires that we heard that the crews had. And they continue to work on Clint Boyer's 14. Again, amazing day. Yeah. So many times we were wondering, would they continue to play it cautious? Well, nobody's playing it cautious. <laughs> There's Roger Penske. He's out in Sonoma saying, what's going on back in Vegas? The caution comes out once again here. And they're waiting to fire the engines out in Sonoma. Literally waiting for this race to be over so they can start there. 
Let's take a look at the points here. Talk about how Jimmy Johnson and those guys were, were doing such a great job today with those issues we just saw. Look now. Now Jimmy's not in the top four, uh, top 12, not advancing into the next round. Again, he'll have so, two more races. And so Austin many people Dillon. have had trouble that yeah. you got a guy like Kevin Harvick who had trouble early in the race. Well, it doesn't look like it hurting that bad because so many other people have had trouble. Yeah. Well, guys, we have another restart coming with Ryan Blaney on the front row. Well, how did he get there? He's all the way back in the third row, but look at this restart right here. You mentioned Joey Logano spin the tires, the 42. He kind of runs the middle of the racetrack and the 12 of Ryan Blaney. Look at this move through one and two. The 42 runs the middle, leaves a little bit of air for the nose of Ryan Blaney. He drives right up to the left side of the 42 from fifth to second. One lap, Marty. And Steve, you saw on that restart, his teammate Joey Logano spin the tires, as you mentioned. They warned Ryan about that. If you're going to start on the outside here, which they thought Brad Kozlowski would take the inside, you might spin the tires. So be very careful. Team Penske has led 113 laps today, Rick. Ryan Blaney's led zero of them. But it doesn't matter. You only have to lead one to win. And the last time we saw the 42 in the second row, he went to the lead three wide into turn one. It's a two-lap shootout to determine the winner of the first race of the playoffs. You win, you automatically advance into round two. Penske making up row one. Brad Keselowski on the inside. Ryan Blaney on the outside. Blaney spins his tires. Watch Logano, watch his Logano, move. Logano, yeah. He's up on the corner. On the outside, I mean. Here comes Blaney trying to go three wide. Logano's got the position. Logano's going to pull the air off. Keselowski will make him really loose off two. Logano's in the position right here. They bump going down the back stretch. Side by side for the lead. Diving into turn three. Keselowski forging ahead of the 22. We got another crash. And they crash behind with the 34 into the wall. Collecting the 41 of Kurt Busch. Two more playoff drivers. The 41 and the 14 both involved. And that means overtime. And another restart for Brad Keselowski. If Michael McDowell was having a really good run, he, he was did. running an 11th spot right there. Would have been a great day for this team. And you see the fluid Wait, running out. They'll have to clean that up. The 38 also involved with David Reagan. 41's also on pit road with heavy, heavy damage. Said Clint Boyer was involved. I thought he was involved, but he drove away. Hard to say. That car's seen better days. And now the question, can the 41 continue? Going to get the red flag. Cars are going to park over in turn red three. Flags out. Impressive move by Brad Keselowski burying that car down into turn three to pull ahead and clear the 22. I had no idea he could drive the car I into either. the corner that deep. When he, <laughs> you think I, he I, did? I, I'm <laughs> like, ah, 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 and he made it work. Holy smokes, these starts are crazy. Let's see some replays about how this crash here happened. A lot of guys involved. Still there, clear. Watch him here, stay low, 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 low. Go up high here. What, like, maybe David, David Reagan? Reagan? Yeah, it was Reagan, Talk David Reagan. Loose. Reagan and McDowell. Yeah. Right there. Mates. Yeah, and 41 right behind him. 41 looks good till right there. I'll tell you what's surprising. There he is right here. You see on the left side of the screen, Reagan just got up the racetrack and got into McDowell. That's what started it. Next week is Richmond. That's supposed to be a short track. As much carnage as we've seen here, this looks more like a short track race than what we would see in Richmond. It's a playoffs, Rick. Every year. Jeff, you and I have this conversation. What do we say? Man, I don't know. What, I mean, is this elimination format going to change the way they drive? Yes, it is absolutely going to change the way they drive. These guys take risks that I don't believe. My opinion is they don't make these risks in the regular season. I'm not even sure they're doing it conscious. I think it's just a subconscious reaction to the position they're putting in. These drivers, Dale, they are aggressive when the playoffs start. Since we've been in the booth in Chicago, it's been this way. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't remember the intensity being like this when I was in the race car, much less the first half of the season. But something's happened. It's, these guys are putting it on the line. They're, they're taking risks. You can hear Denny Hamlin in his interview after his accident, how he's trying to do more than the car's capable of doing. Looks like a lot of guys are doing that. 
Yeah, you get in a position in the middle of the season where you just take that 12th, 14th, 15th, go home, but you know, riding around there, right? He has to know I'm giving points up. He sees out who's out in front. All playoff drivers up there in the top six. I mean, currently, Rick, we have eight playoff drivers in the top nine. The other eight playoff drivers, 20th or worse, and that's going to get worse because Kurt Busch is going to continue to fall down the standings. I'll tell you who's not going to be happy about this cleanup in turn four is going to be Kyle Larson because that's right up against the wall, and with only two laps, he was going to, I'm sure, try to find anywhere that someone wasn't going to run to make or take advantage of his starting position. He's back in fourth, which, again, we had mentioned that's kind of ideal for him to be on the outside of row two. Yeah, if, I, if I'm him and he's looking at that, I bet he's thinking, well, I better get all my work done before I get over here in turn four. Better do everything I can in one and two. And a lot of work still to be done here. And so while we're waiting under a red flag condition, let's go out to Sonoma and check in with Lee Diffie. Championship contender
Yeah, thank you, Lee. And under a yellow flag condition now, 10 minutes, 37 seconds for the red flag. And just a reminder, the IndyCar Series race is continuing on CNBC, as we heard Lee Diffie mention. And as soon as we get through this race and through victory lane, we will send you back out to Sonoma for the conclusion of that last race, a championship race for the Verizon IndyCar Series. And you look at the playoff leaderboard, Again, it will be an overtime finish, and where they are running, these playoff contenders, a tough day for Denny Hamlin, Chase Elliott, Kevin Harvick, Eric Jones, Clint Boyer, now Jimmy Johnson, recently involved in an incident, Alex Bowman, Kurt Busch. Kyle Busch has had a long, long day already. He's currently running, amazingly, in the ninth position. Very few cars in the playoffs haven't had damage or been involved in an incident today. Rick, it's a good thing it's a 400-mile race. I mean, if there was another 100 miles, I'm not sure there'd be any playoff cars left at the rate this race is going. It is <laughs> just not the day for a playoff car. The two of Brad Keselowski has been very impressive on restarts. Let's listen into his radio. I'll just give me an update on a lap down situation. The 22, as he was passing us, clipped us and got us loose. We were down on the apron. The 22 was pushing, and when he got by us, he got us still loose. He, you know, he... So you hear teammates talking about well, clipping us this. and getting us loose. Yeah, let's watch this reflayless last restart. It got aggressive. See Logano. He was going to try to get a move underneath Keselowski, but Keselowski smartly went to the bottom, and then Joey jumped to the outside. Yeah. And you and I both, Junior, thought Joey's in the hot seat. I He's where he needs to be, but Keselowski in the three did some crazy stuff. Brad? You know, Joey didn't really jump to the outside. Brad went to the apron. And <laughs> Joey just stayed that. where he was. It was really interesting. That shows you right there, Brad wants to protect the bottom. He'd rather give Logano or whoever the outside, he is not going to give them the bottom. Alex Bowman, as well as Jimmy Johnson on pit road, two of the playoff contenders working on their cars after they've had some damage, significant damage. I don't know how long that red flag was, but those guys that sitting in that car, as we've been watching the IndyCar footage uh, coverage from Sonoma, those guys have been sitting over there in turn three, and those cars over 150 degrees inside. That's going to take its toll on these guys physically, but mentally, too. Mentally, too. They will have to focus for two laps. Yeah, I'd say from the start of that IndyCar race, maybe they were watching this race. <laughs> Figured they'd hit something. Interior, there's the interior of the 47. Anybody know what that says? Let me know. It said <laughs> over 150 a, earlier, and now I think. I have, a hard, I have a hard time believing it's 188 in there. <laughs> it's saying, I want out. It's, it's really hot. Done. Yeah, I think that thing's broke. This is only the second race ever to end in overtime here at Las Vegas. Well, it's going to be in overtime, but I'm not willing to say this is going to be the last overtime. What I've seen today, anything yeah. can happen. With all the trouble that, that you know, the, the guys in the playoffs are having, have some guys having some pretty good runs. Daniel Suarez in sixth place right now. Trevor Bain in 12th. Paul Menard 11th. Busher 13th. Regan Smith, super sub in 14th. Landon Castle in the double zero in 16th place. Big days for teams like that. At a place where, you know, this is a this is a track that, that pays really well. It's a, it's a it's a big market. So you see Keselowski, he's picked the bottom again. No surprise. He is committed to protecting that bottom. Martin Truex Jr. will be committed to trying to find a way to get underneath the two car. Well, we've seen just how difficult it is to start on the outside of the front row. The last two, they've spun the tires. That's only going to get worse. And I know the tires have cooled down, but they also have more laps on them, and it just gets harder and harder to keep from spinning those rear tires. Joey had such a great restart, and he's going down the back straightaway thinking, I got him. And then Brad went into turn three and drove that car in there so far and cleared him. Wonder what Joey's thinking now. Like, what do I got to do? Top five are all playoff contenders. Again, if you win, if you're in the playoffs and win, you automatically will advance 
into the next round. That's what everyone will be fighting for. That automatic advancement into round two with a win here at Las Vegas. And coming out of turn four, coming up on overtime presented by Credit One Bank. It'll be a two lap shootout. Not a good start for Joey. What's Truex going to do here? He's pushing the two. Now he moves to the outside. But the side draft from Joey slowed him down a little bit. That clears Keselowski. How about Larson on the bottom? Keselowski looks to be in great shape right here. Down the back stretch they go. Keselowski way out in front. An eight car link lead already. Five back in line. Larson all the way to the top of the racetrack. And now, one more time around. The final lap in Vegas. And how about Almarola back there? Underneath Blaney for fifth. Keselowski trying to keep the momentum up. He won the Southern 500 Just two weeks ago. Last week, he wins the Brickyard 400. And now, he's going to be able to punch his ticket into round two. Coming out of turn four, Keselowski wins three in a row. He'll win at Vegas. Great job, everybody. Heck yeah. We wondered who would win the 500th race for Team Penske. It has been decided. Brad Keselowski gets that organization's 500th win. Good job, buddy. Great restart. Three in a row at Vegas. Cha-ching, baby. Nice job. Great job up pit road, everybody. Thank you. Brad Keselowski wins the first race of the Monster Energy Cup Series playoffs. Well, his daughter's not going to have to kiss the bricks after this race. She didn't want to do that at the Brickyard in Indianapolis, but a tradition that Brad has continued after every win. What were those odds? Yeah, uh, it was 64,000 to one. And we had a dollar on it, right? <laughs> <laughs> that you win could win. Win number 500, buddy. Win number 500. That you could win three oh, races yeah. in a row Forgot on a 40 car one. field. Oh, yeah, he said, I forgot about that one. 500 of the company, man, really proud. The Stars and Stripes always ride along with Brad Keselowski after each win. Such a huge supporter of the armed forces, as well as the veterans. This moment right here, presented by Sunoco, fueling victories all season long. And the last three races for Brad Keselowski. They really weren't on the radar earlier in the year. Stuart Haas, they were the dominant Ford team all season. I'd say they weren't on the radar three weeks ago. I mean, these guys, three in a row. I, I didn't think they could win a race in the playoffs. Prove me wrong. Well, he just won the first one. And he's, he's piling up these playoff points that are going to carry him through these rounds. And of course, out in Sonoma, they've got an eye on not only the race there for the Ryzen IndyCar Series, but the captain's watching back here. And yes, that's right, 500 for Roger Penske, the celebration already underway and the smiles for the captain. With the win, he moves into the second round. And you look at the playoff leaderboard, Martin Trex Jr., a very good day. Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, both struggling today, but those playoff points that they brought into this race could propel them into that second round. Kyle Busch found a way to rally, and with all this trouble, he finished seventh. That was a huge comeback for Kyle Busch and his team. Well, and Austin Dillon finished 11th today, plus nine. That is not fancy, it's not doesn't have a lot of lights and flash to it, but very effective for what he's trying to do. So watch Kyle Busch. He never quit. I know he was frustrated, but look at him three wide, coming to the start-finish line and take the checkered. Just a great effort. 
He spun the car earlier, he had all kinds of problems, but you just never know what's gonna happen when everybody else had trouble. They kept digging and seventh place finish. Suarez, a top 10 finish. Newman, Menard, non-playoff drivers that all finished up in the top 10. 12 playoff drivers in all had issues today of the 16. And again, only 12 will advance into round two. One thing that that did do, Rick, is think about who was one of the first guys to have trouble in this race early, Eric Jones in the 20. Well, he finished 15th. I mean, I'm sorry, he's 15th in points, finished way back, but it could have been a lot worse. He's 19 points out, but with problems in a race that early, I think he has to feel reasonably good about a very bad day. Heading into the Neon Garage and to victory lane for Brad Kozlowski. A unique victory lane here at Vegas, and why wouldn't it be in this entertainment capital of the world? The fans get to be a part of this. And a reminder, we'll get to the IndyCar race after this victory lane celebration, and then post-race interviews. You can find those on NBCSports.com. All smiles for Paul Wolf, crew chief there in victory lane. Let's go down to Dave. Give me a couple minutes, guys. Helmet is still on for Brad Keselowski. We'll get back to you. All right. And the uniqueness of Las Vegas. You see fans able to enjoy the victory lane celebration. And what a day and what three weeks it has been for Brad Keselowski, a team that hadn't won all throughout the regular season, goes to Darlington. And an impressive pit stop by their team gets him out in front. He's able to outdo Kyle Larson on a late restart, go on to get win number one of the season for him. He backs it up with a Brickyard 400 win the very next week. And now that momentum is strong for this entire team as he gets the 500th win for Penske and the first win of the playoffs, ensuring him a spot in the round of 12. Helmet is off, climbing out of the car. Now we'll go back to Dave. There he is, and saluting his team right back. He's got a much needed shower after a long day. Hot, hot temperatures and multiple restarts there at the end, Brad. How did you hold that field off? Oh, man. I think first off, Dave, I got to say congratulations to all those fans that made it through the whole race in the stands at 100 degrees. That was really cool. Thank you to the fans. Uh, and Penske, uh, 500 wins today. Huge day for the captain. Uh, I know Mr. Penske's watching. You did it, boss. Uh, but uh, to start off the playoffs with a win is, uh, uh, that man, that's really strong. And uh, let alone the three in a row and all that great stuff. But uh, it's really a testament to this team here. Uh, they, they've been so strong on pit road, and I couldn't have done it without them. We weren't as fast as a 78 car, but we nailed the uh, pit stops and the restarts when it counted, and uh, that, that put us in position. So uh, really, really proud of the effort from the team here today. Fun race, hot one, but uh, those restarts, that, that was the key. Strong on pit road, strong on the track. Brad Keselowski, the winner at Las Vegas. Great day for Albarola, Blaney, Logano, Trux Jr., and Larson, but an excellent day for Keselowski as he wins here. Now let's go back out to Sonoma and Lee Diffie. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.